Good afternoon, everybody. Storm Chaser Norman Smith here, and uh, today we have a uh, pretty substantial severe weather threat today across the northeastern U.S., as well as uh, for the uh, southeast as well. If we go take a look over to the day one outlook issued by the Storm Prediction Center, we have a really large slight risk extending down to northern Virginia, and also this large marginal risk uh, extending all the way down to uh, the Florida Panhandle. And if we take a look at our tornado props for today, if we can find it. If we take a look, let's see. There we go. So if we take a look at our tornado props for today, we do have a 2% tornado risk cleared down here in the Florida Panhandle, Mobile, uh, far southern Alabama, just south of uh, the Dothan, Alabama area, as we already have a couple severe thunderstorm warnings, which we will get to. But we do have a 5% tornado risk clear up in Quebec uh, and uh, in Maine as well. But this is, again, this is mostly going to be a damaging wind, large hail threat for most of uh, the New York, Pennsylvania uh, Maryland, Virginia area, but this tornado risk starting near Vermont, uh, New Hampshire, um, is definitely going to be a thing to watch out for as uh, we get, go on with time. But I, I, I like to start these live streams, especially when uh, storms start to fire, when we get these MCDs or mesoscale discussions, uh, because typically uh, the Storm Prediction Center will issue mesoscale discussions. Uh, just uh, right before they issue a tornado or just any type of watch. Uh, so MCDs uh, already being put out for the Northeast. Uh, watch issuance up to 80% uh, with all hazards possible. Um, and again, we have an MCD also getting extended down into uh, New York and also down to the Virginia areas as well. If we take a look here, we have a couple of semi-discrete storms starting to already fire uh, in western Maine. Just near the Canadian-U.S. border, severe thunderstorm warnings already going on in Canada. Uh, and they're already putting out severe thunderstorm watches. Uh, tornado watches also out for uh, Quebec and uh, southeastern Quebec uh, near Montreal and just to the east. And I expect we get a severe thunderstorm watch here uh, momentarily for these regions. But today we're, we're going to be... Uh, really keeping a close eye on these storms as the day goes on. And it looks like for the next several days we're going to be having a, uh, a, a pretty active uh, severe weather day, uh, or at least severe weather days, um, <clears throat> as the week continues. Excuse me. So we'll go take a uh, – we'll go – to I'm trying to pull up mesoscale analysis here real quick. First, we'll, we'll keep on looking at these storms. Storms are already starting to initiate well before the watch is already out. And some of these storms from earlier this morning already going into uh, Canada. It also looks like we got a new severe, a, uh, MCD already out for um, southern West Virginia uh, for, in the Virginia area. In Western Virginia, and it looks like it is going to be for these com these uh this complex of thunderstorms, just here to the west, along the Kentucky Virginia border. Should just bring only damaging winds, no tornado threat, thankfully. But this tornado or this secondary area for tornadoes looks to be near the uh, Florida Panhandle, just near Mobile, and I would assume it would be for these storms just down off the coast as they come through. Again, we've already had some severe thunderstorm warnings with this linear complex, this MCS or mesoscale convective system. Let's see, the, this, the, this is putting out some pretty heavy winds. Radar uh, estimating around 68 miles an hour aloft. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be transferred down to the surface, but it's definitely possible. Mesoscale, dis oh, uh, that's the mesoscale discussion. Let me pull up the severe thunderstorm warning. 60 mile an hour winds and penny-sized hail. No tornado possible with this, but this is the severe thunderstorm warning is 
continuing on for uh, areas of uh, north of Dothan. Uh, Abbeville's probably going to get uh, an extension of a severe thunderstorm warning uh, as this pushes off to the northeast. But the second area, but this is not the main threat with this. Uh, with the with this the system's not the main threat for later today. These storms out here are going to be the ones we're going to watch out for that could potentially produce a tornado later today. So again, tornado watch, severe thunderstorm watch is already going on in Canada. Uh, it's really weird as these like these these watches go on for a very very long time, ten hours. Typically here in the States, they last for about five. So, very odd to see that their uh, watches last for a very long time, even though storms are not are not going up in Canada just quite yet. It looks like we have a potential developing thunderstorm. Could be super cellular here uh, in the next several minutes, uh, just near Moose River, uh, Maine, on uh, Highway 201. That's going to be the big one to watch out for. And we'll pull up mesoanalysis here later uh, as the watches come out so we can get a better idea of how the environment is so far. Let's see here. So yeah, this thing's already starting to get a, some broad rotation with it. Uh, so here, here's your greens. These, these little, the green or, or like grayish colors uh, going toward the radar. Here's your red colors, which will be pushing away from the radar. There's your outbound winds. So your center of circulation is going to be setting right here, just north of Highway 201, or just to the east of Jackman. And again, nothing really impressive. No gate-to-gate -gate, uh, couplet on it yet, but however, it it is still showing a uh, potent updraft. Uh, as you know, and these storms are just now firing too, and they're already getting uh, circulation. What is the cape for the uh, highest points? See how much instability. Uh, let me go. Actually. That's a good question. We'll go up and pull up the SPC hourly meso scale analysis here for you guys. Let's see here. Go to the northeast. We'll go take a look on meso scale analysis here. Absolutely love this product. Very crucial for today. But it looks like there's the best amount of capes not even pushing up into Maine yet. But it looks like within the next two to four, six hours. Uh, as the day goes on, your instability gets up to near 2,000, 1,500 mix layer, which is definitely enough to get severe weather, including tornadoes. We'll go and we'll go take a look at the hodograph map. Uh, this this pretty much just shows the turning as you go up with height, and it definitely looks like uh, it is very supportive of supercells. You can see the. Uh, the wind vectors way out ahead in central Maine, very curved at the low levels, especially uh, where your pink line is at, uh, at the bottom of your hodograph. That's your zero to one kilometer layer. So you see how that turns with height as like, uh, as you get to the red green colors, you know, that that's looking up towards the two, three, four kilometer region of the atmosphere. So when you see this turning with height, uh, that, that shows that um, you have a lot of change in direction. And um, once you have a lot of change in direction, uh, tornadoes thrive off of that. So it definitely is, has a, a chance today to produce tornadoes, as the SPC mentioned, and also that 5% being uh, out there as well. You can see the increase of coverage in storms just explodes in, uh, near Montreal and just pushes on to the east. And also potentially for uh, severe thunderstorms could be down here as far as Pennsylvania later today um, as a, a mesoscale discussion is already in place across the northeast. So we'll go take a look back at the uh, developing storms here. Uh, it's very, very interesting that these are popping off this early. Not sure if these will pose a severe threat as the instability is not there yet. But however heavy wind or at least uh, gusty winds and lightning is going to be a pretty big excuse me a be a uh, concern as of now but this goes to show you that you don't need a whole lot of instability to at least get a rotating thunderstorm as long as you have the shear the good the good enough shear that's present uh, you can have still rotating uh, thunderstorms 
This does look like our first developing supercell today, just to the east of Jack Jackman, Maine. Very weird to see supercells up here. Very, very weird. Me personally, I, I, I don't think I'll ever chase the northeast unless it's something really crazy. But the northeast is just not my thing. I deal with enough trees and forests as it is down here in the Midwest. But again, I, I like to get really early with these setups. I like to, uh, I like to be a little bit early, just because um, you never know what can happen with these setups. Sometimes they do go early, earlier than expected. But no matter what, if it does or if it uh, goes off the next two hours, we'll always be here. Big old severe, uh, severe thunderstorm here in Canada. Big severe thunderstorm warning. And see, that's severe thunderstorm warnings for two hours. That's absolutely crazy to think that, that they just last that long. But again, also with the Northeast, as I said earlier, we're going to have to talk about uh, the setup down here in uh, the Deep South. Again, we'll actually go... Back to mesoscale analysis here uh, here in a second, and we'll take a look at the uh, environment for later today down here in this region as well. So, yeah, I mean, again, you're down you're down near the Gulf Co Coast, uh, the Gulf Coast. So, uh, thermodynamics and moisture is not going to be a concern today. If we already took a look at dew points, you're already reaching 70 dew points just along just along the uh, coast. But as today goes on, you could really see that instability start to ramp up. It's these, this like arc of storms that fire here within the next four hours on mesoscale analysis just off the coast, just set to the south of Mobile. Uh, that again, as that comes on shore, that could, that's definitely going to be a concern for uh, the later round of severe weather tonight in the Florida Panhandle, and it very well could be uh, tornadic. Um, but we'll have to wait and see how that evolves. So again, morning complex of thunderstorms uh, pushing through southern Alabama already. And it is severe warned. Uh, already a severe thunderstorm warning for to the north of Dothan with this uh, MCS. And again, uh, no watch issuance. Uh, thankfully is going to be is going to come out of this only down only to a 20 percent here um, but again still doesn't matter if it's a watch or not it is still very important to keep an eye on this and here later we'll go take a look at the uh, the SPC outlooks for um, for the next couple days as well again as we have severe weather uh, brewing for the next several days and actually we'll go take a look we'll go ahead and take a look at satellite imagery here for this morning too let me go ahead and pull that up for you guys should have already have this ready but shame on me absolutely love looking at satellite imagery uh, just before storm initiation because Typically, if you look right before storm initiation, you'll get a really good idea of where storms are going to fire for the day. So if we'll go take a look at satellite here real quick. Man, you can really see this cumulus field. Looks like little popcorns. Uh, looks like little popcorn kernels. Uh, you know, already going through New Hampshire into Maine. You can already see our thunderstorm already exploding. Uh, just to the north, and we'll go ahead and play a loop. And you can just see this cumulus field already just starting to progress off to the east. So I do expect these storms to maybe fire a little bit early, and they're going to fire roughly in the same region that these morning storms are firing in. So, just to give a good idea of how, where storms are uh, looking to fire, and of course you can't look at these on radar, so if we go back to radar, all you can pretty much see is these uh, 
already developing thunderstorms. You can't look at the cumulus field. You, you don't you know you don't have satellite on radar scope. But again, satellites are a very good tool to use, especially to see where uh, initiation is going to take place or how long is it's going to take place. So you can just watch trends of how uh, thunderstorms are already developing. If they're sustaining themselves, then they can keep on developing. Again, we'll 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 go back and forth. We'll actually go pull up the quad panel here. One of my I absolutely love using this panel. I, I I it really depends. Sometimes I don't like using two a whole lot personally. It's either it's got to be either one or four. I don't know why. That's just personal preference. That's usually what I prefer. And looking at it on the stream, it actually doesn't look half bad. I figured my face cam would take up most of it, but I guess not. So. Uh, again, watching these thunderstorms already develop in Maine. Uh, tornado watch is currently ongoing for Quebec. Excuse me. For Quebec, uh, southeastern Quebec near uh, Montreal. And that's going to be going on for all day and all evening. Uh, tornado watch expiring in exactly 10 hours. Um, so we'll, we'll be on the live stream as long as this... Uh, as long as the severe weather threat is still in play. So if you guys are new to the channel, uh, my name is Norman Smith. I'm a storm chaser. I've been chasing for the past two years, but I've always had a fascination with uh, meteorology and tornadoes. Uh, you know, obviously I can't chase every setup, but um, if I don't post tornado videos or I, if I don't post anything, I'm usually live streaming uh, severe weather coverage. So. If you guys are new to the channel, welcome. I'm glad to uh, have you guys on board. And if you guys are new, make sure to like and subscribe. If you like this type of content, if you guys have the same severe weather interest you do, then, uh, you know, as I do, then, you know, feel free to subscribe to the channel if you guys enjoy this content. So we're going to be sitting here waiting for uh, the main uh, initiation, severe thunderstorm watches or, or a tornado watch, particularly up here near Maine and Vermont. And New Hampshire could be issued here within the next couple hours. And we'll 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 go back and forth um, in between for mesoanalysis as the day goes on, because it it will change as the day goes on too. Again, today is actually the anniversary of the Joplin, Missouri EF5 tornado. Just realized that. That's absolutely crazy to think about. It was 11 years ago. It's wild. I, it just seems like time just flies. As you get older, that's kind of scary. We'll see. We'll go up and pull up some new information about the tornado that happened in Michigan. We'll go and go up and pull up that information for you guys as well. NWS Gaylord uh, actually went out and surveyed this tornado. Uh, came back with an EF3 rating with maximum winds up to 150 miles an hour. And it was the first EF3 or greater in Michigan since 2012. Especially to happen this far north is pretty pretty mind boggling. It's on the ground for over uh, 16 miles. Now, unfortunately, two fatalities did occur with this tornado, but it's it's going to be a really it's that was a really interesting storm to watch on radar. Went from a storm that didn't really look like much to going out and producing a tornado. So again, we're going to be uh, currently watching, uh, waiting for uh, severe thunderstorm watches to be issued uh, across the northeast, but also uh, waiting for the setup down here. It looks like we have a new severe thunderstorm warning uh, already in place uh, for Eufaula, Alabama, along the Alabama-Georgia border. And this severe thunderstorm warning is going to be for locations of uh, central Barber County in southeastern Alabama and also uh, yeah, southwestern. I don't know why it doesn't say the county of that. That's really odd. 
usually like this place. Oh yeah, Northern Dale County, uh, Henry County, Clay County, Randolph County, uh, Early County, Quitman County. Again, no tornado possible with this. This should not bring a tornado threat, but you can really see. You can really see the the strong winds right here along the leaning edge of this MCS. Again, that should put that should work its way to the northeast as the day goes on. But thankfully, there's it doesn't really look like this is going to be a QLCS tornado threat, which is really really good news. Again, our storms up here in Maine are looking pretty pretty meager to start out. And again, it's only one o'clock Eastern. Uh, thunder severe thunderstorm watches are not issued yet, but uh, they will here uh, momentarily. As we do have a MCD, you can see these blue uh, these blue ovals, these blue circles already uh, put out by the Storm Prediction Center. Watch, watch issuance is already up to 80% uh, with all hazards possible. And again, any semi-discrete storm could produce a brief tornado. But it seems like your biggest tornado threat is how outlined by the SPC. It's going to be northwest Maine into Quebec. Again, Quebec already uh, is under a tornado watch for the next nine hours. Again, they do their watches a little bit differently here compared to the U.S., which is really, really odd. But it is what it is, so. We'll go and, we'll go and just keep on monitoring these storms. I'm waiting for, uh, I'm waiting for the uh, severe thunderstorm watch to be issued. Again, but might as well since nothing a whole lot tapping right now. We'll go and take a look at the um, go and take a look on the SPC page. So this is the Storm Prediction Center page, and as you can see, we already have the slight risk already up and then there's the tornado risk for today and see that five percent I was talking about uh, and also that two percent down the Florida panhandle but also we have a another slight risk down here for uh, south central Texas with a tornado threat also being noted as well and we have another slight risk for uh, southern Texas too and also uh, Wednesday, we do have a uh, another slight risk day for 15% for Eastern Texas, only Louisiana, and uh, Western Mississippi. So, pretty active day of severe weather. Uh, tornado props thankfully look low for the next several days. But, again, does it really matter? Uh, tornadoes can still happen if, a pro if the probability is there then no matter what, it can still happen. And also, the Storm Prediction Center is not mentioning this setup uh, on Wednesday. But there could be a setup here in Ohio and Indiana on Wednesday as well. We'll see how that trends, but uh, we'll go ahead and actually take a look at how that's evolving. So this is a 12Z NAM model that's already coming out, uh, just came out this morning. Uh, and this is by 18Z, so by 1 o'clock Eastern, you can see this huge buildup of instability down to the south, uh, streaming from the Gulf of Mexico, already making its way up north by 1 o'clock. And you can just see this, this narrow, this cold front back here in the of course, in the open warm sector, you're already getting values of the 2,500, 2,000 uh, mixed layer cape. There's your warm front out here in southwest Ohio as well. You can really just see everything mapped out here. Surface low up north near Chicago. 
cold front extending down back behind uh, to the west of this greater instability axis. And then your warm front just to the east of that axis as well. If we take a look at dew points, dew points look pretty high. Getting up to near 70 dew points uh, southeast or southwestern Indiana and get high 60 dews. And again, you could really map out this. Uh, if you had to create a surface chart, you could really map this out here. And, you know, what's great about this is uh, before the watches get issued, you guys can actually see the stuff I look for typically in forecasting. So Theta Ease is another big one that I absolutely love to use. And it's just pretty much the, the, the transport of uh, temperature and dew points. And you can see we're really getting getting really high. 350s Theta E. Uh, typically I like to see around 340-ish. So we have a very, very solid transport of moisture and, uh, thermo and thermodynamics. We'll take a look at our 850 millibar pattern as well. And you can see a very, very stout low-level jet, especially when it kicks in around 8 o'clock. Around 60, 70 knots almost uh, right along that I-75 corridor and just to the north of Columbus along 33 and the Highway 71 area. And again, our upper level support is there. You can see that 500 millibar trough, a short wave coming through. We'll zoom out and take a look at this trough as it's coming through. You can start to see that trough starting to build up. Looks like more of a slightly negatively tilted, almost neutral tilted trough. You can see how that trough is slightly oriented just a little bit, uh, a little bit like to the left there on that chart, but it looks like it's just neutral, like a neutral negatively tilted trough. You can really see that, that trough just starting to eject off into Indiana and Ohio as the day goes on. And we'll go zoom back in to the Midwest here, if I can find it. There it is. I probably skimmed, I skimmed over like 100 times. <laughs> so we got the instability. We got the, we got the wind shear. Actually, we'll take a look at the wind shear here. You can see a very, very potent amount of wind shear. Uh, 200, 300, almost approaching 300 across uh, Indiana and Ohio. And of course, as your uh, instability gets transported north, your wind shear is also coming along with it as well as that trough starts to dig in from going west to east. And we'll take some uh, we'll take some soundings here as well. Take some soundings. We'll go back to the surface chart here so we can get more of an accurate sounding. Is it 21Z just along the cold front? We'll we'll take a sounding here real quick. And that is very contaminated. I'm probably not going to use this. However, uh, to note that it's really contaminated, this this red line that's actually covering this on like right on my face cam. Uh, typically if you see uh, contamination it's really not a good sounding to use as an analog but you can really see a very very stout uh, hodograph especially at the zero to three kilometer layer very good turning uh, with height but your upper levels are really really rough you can see how the green line just kind of folds in on itself uh, suggesting that it could be either linear or very high precip. Uh, so either way, uh, the storms will be likely hinting that it could be a very heavy rainfall maker. As noted by your P watts down here, just below the webcam, you can see 1.63. So very, very high uh, pre uh, precipitable, wa precipitable water values. Three three kilometer cape again pushing up into 187 uh, so your low level instability is going to be there and again one thing to note about this uh, sounding is there is not there's not a cap at all 
getting zero. So you're not going to have anything that's going to hold off storms from going. They're all going to go up at once. So this, this sounding is really telling me that um, this looks like a very linear setup. Um, but however, with this very, very uh, textbook, almost zero to three kilometer hodograph, that is suggesting a very, very favorable environment for at least QLCS tornadoes and also embedded supercells uh, that remain the strongest. So, it's, this definitely does look like a, look, look like a potential tornado producing uh, environment, but we will see how that evolves. You can see that cra that cold front starts to crash, especially between 21Z and 0Z. But I definitely expect if this evolu if the NAMS evolution does pan out, I definitely could see a tornado threat uh, from cleared in from uh, Indiana I wonder if you could potentially see some warm front riders early in the morning Cause typically your warm front storms go early or tornado really early so there's longer warm front uh, and very very skinny thermodynamic profile 78 over 70 though still pretty sufficient however elapsed rates of loft are very poor sore so you could have an updraft that goes, but sustaining itself is still a big question. You're not going to get, again, you're not going to get the really good thermodynamic profiles until you get into uh, later that afternoon, according to the NAM model. And here's along the warm front in southwest Ohio. And again, we can still see and notice that, that, uh, you know how the upper levels kind of just fold in on themselves so it looks, it looks like you're not going to have really good venting so storms are probably going to be ra rain wrapped in this solution uh very messy but either way it's still a tornado conducive environment so that is something we're going to have to watch out for uh see how models trend with that setup so and again a lot definitely can change as uh the next several models uh, come out. So, again, we're just monitoring these thunderstorms here in Maine before the, the watch does get issued. Again, severe thunderstorm, new severe thunderstorm warning now in effect. Uh, just, we'll go just to the uh, west of the original severe thunderstorm warned storms. Again, these storms are bringing, uh, down here in southern Alabama, are already bringing 60, 70 mile an hour wind gusts out ahead of, out ahead of the, uh, out of the head of the main precip. So, typically what you see is this really beautiful shelf cloud from all the winds getting pushed out, uh, and, uh, down from the thunderstorm. And once this wind gets pushed out from the thunderstorm down to the surface, it usually creates this very, very beautiful shelf cloud. Uh, just out in front of it and typically your winds are really the strongest near there as all the the momentum is being transferred down to the surface in that region so you get 60 70 mile an hour winds is definitely possible with this uh, severe thunderstorm warnings are still going on just to the just near you fall in south of Columbus Georgia yep 60 mile an hour winds and quarter size hail Again, we're definitely still seeing some of these thunderstorm some of the thunderstorms developing off of the coast. They're eventually going to be pushing inland, and you can actually see some of these are already starting to rotate a little bit. Some of them already have mesocyclones. Could be offshore supercells starting to push in, and of course that is why the Storm Prediction Center has this two percent out for this region. So just in case a, tor a tornado does happen, we uh, from these. Uh, onshore or offshore developing supercells so again these thunderstorms are still look like they're going to continue to push on 
uh, just to to the east. And again, we're going to try to see what radar is the best right now. Definitely looks like. Yeah, so definitely doesn't look like they're going to be uh, imminent severe weather producers, but still producing lightning, still producing heavy rainfalls, maybe some small hail actually on the southern stuff on the southern storm are you get, seeing some high deep red uh pink contours as well we'll take a look at the take a look at a product to look for hail actually Dir digital vertically integrated liquid and you can see here uh so this pretty much shows how heavy the what the uh, precip uh is it's kind of a, a measurement to show that so typically when you see the red, uh, purple, white colors, that's really a, a good sign. But once you see these these dark greens, yellows, they're pretty much just heavy rainmaker. So this is very well could be producing some maybe some peas, uh, but nothing nothing substantial as of now. But that is probably going to change as the day goes on. Again, uh, special weather state storms. Uh, with special weather statements on them down here to the south in West Virginia, southern West Virginia, um, Virginia area. See, again, this big line complex of thunderstorms uh, already pushing through uh, near the approaching I-77. Here's I-77. Runs to Withville, Withleville, and there's I-81. And these storms are, looks like they're going to be crossing just to the north of Withleville. Again, damaging winds, maybe some small hail is the biggest threat with this. Uh, SBC does not look to issue a tornado watch. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, SBC doesn't look like they're going to issue a tornado watch, or not tornado watch, severe thunderstorm watch with this. However, um, still, still, still something to keep in mind. Uh, and again, if you live in this area, uh, southern West Virginia, or ahead of this line of thunderstorm, just make sure to... Uh, you know, get the loose objects out of your, you know, out of the backyard or in the front yard, like toys or uh, anything that's loosely fastened. Make sure to bring it in the house. And same thing, same thing with all these down here too, especially with a severe thunderstorm warning. And especially if you have something loose uh, laying around in your yard that could be thrown as like a projectile. <coughs> Excuse me. So again, severe thunderstorm warning is still going on. Uh, and again, no, no, uh, threat of a QLCS tornado, uh, with this line. Thankfully, tornado threat is going to be later today. <coughs> so, and again, main, main tornado threat for today is going to be in Quebec and Canada and also in Northeast Maine, as well as down in New Hampshire, uh, Vermont and Far, far eastern New York, and also uh, down here in the Florida Panhandle as well. That's going to be our main concern for today. Severe thunderstorm watch may come here later uh, in Florida, depending on how things go. But we, we time will only tell. And again, we have next several days of severe weather. I'm not sure if I'm going to stream those, depending on how the evolution goes um but again time will tell who knows at this point still wait still waiting on a really good tornado day in here in ohio ohio has not been good at all for tornado setups they always, they always keep underperforming they always bust <clears throat> there's always a running joke with a couple buddies of mine that are storm chasers that and that lives in ohio and they're it's just a really bad state for storm chasing but you can see these storms in Maine you know have some upper level rotation to them so again but they they do not pose a very they don't pose a tornadic threat um, again that's gonna be for later today um, as these storms go on uh, go on and develop in the late afternoon again we'll take a look at satellite uh, just here real quick Go ahead and look at satellite here. We already have the tab open. So you can see this cumulus field already developing here in New Hampshire. Um, 
and we already have this cumulus field developing up here to the north in Quebec. And actually, we'll take a just a wiki chat here real quick. Yeah, you can see this cumulus field already developing near Quebec. Storms trying to fire already in New Hampshire. You can see these storms in Maine already still going. But this is the region we're going to have to watch out for, just to the east of Montreal. This cumulus field, these little popcorn uh, clouds that we can, that all I call. Um, these could be our these these could be our supercell tornado makers, our, our severe weather makers for today as well. Yeah, we'll take a look off to the the Gulf Coast. You can see that there is our two percent for today, but you can see the morning convection already rolling out across southern Alabama. And you can see these storms exploding right here and you can see it's you see a surface slow just in front of the surface so you can see that counterclockwise spin but you can see the, the storm the top of these anvils just exploding out here in the gulf so as that surface slow starts to come to the shore uh these thunderstorms will approach land and again we could have a uh potential severe weather tornado threat with these Again, we don't have high tornado probs for today, thankfully. But, however, again, in 2% or 5%, uh, you know, tornadoes will and can happen. Not saying they will happen today, but, again, the probability is there. So, no matter if you're in a 2%, clear up to a 60% tornado prob, you still got to take it serious. So, I I've personally seen tornadoes in 2%. Um... If you guys would want, if you, if anyone's watched the Maxburg, Ohio tornado video from July of last year, uh, that was in a 2%. Actually, the Storm Prediction Center put it originally in this 5, uh, in, the, in a 5% tornado risk, and they took it away. Um, but still produced six tornadoes in, uh, in eastern Ohio. So, needless to say, tornadoes can happen in lower risk. So, no matter what, it's still something to be very, very concerned about. But I have to uh, go downstairs, and I'm going to take a break for a couple minutes. So, uh, here in a few seconds. So, I will go ahead and be right back with you guys here momentarily.
All right, guys, I am back. Sorry about that. Had to go for, had to go downstairs for a little bit and deal with something. So, uh, currently, again, watching these storms in Maine. And it does look like uh, since I got back, uh, these storms have intensified pretty significantly. Here, adjust my camera here, see how it looks. So, again, storms starting to intensify now. Uh, just near Greenville, Maine. Again, severe thunderstorm watch should be coming here for portions of the northeast. Um, again, looks like uh, let's, we'll go to look on a ZDR. Uh, and it looks like updraft is starting to really strengthen here. Getting a really potent updraft. As long as this one down here to the south as well. So it looks like these are going to be intensifying thunderstorms um, as they push off to the east. So again, uh, watching these storms could definitely become severe or sub-severe, actually, as with time. And we'll go take a look at the echo top, see how high uh, these storms are pushing into the atmosphere near 40,000 feet, 39,000 feet. So very, very potent updrafts uh, already going and already starting uh, in Maine. And again, this is just the beginning. Uh, and again, uh Canada's already becoming prepared already, issuing that tornado watch for Quebec, uh, near Quebec, Montreal, already. Uh, so, I'm sure we will get a watch here shortly. Severe thunderstorm warning, uh, looks like it's continuing on into the Columbus, Georgia area. Looks like we have a couple cells firing out ahead of this, and likely this will not be these, uh, little, uh, what I call renegade uh, thunderstorms are not going to be uh, severe. But however, severe thunderstorm warning is uh, my mic is super quiet. Hold on, hold on. Is that better? See if that's a little bit better. I may have jacked the a little bit when I got back. I should have just paused it instead of turning it down on. The OBS software, but that's all right. Uh, severe thunderstorm warning now in effect for uh, uh, just southwest of Columbus, uh, Georgia, and Alabama. And again, we are. Why does it keep? I don't understand why it just keeps pulling up that. Uh, so it's warm for 60 quarter size hail. Again, no tornado threat with this. Tornado threat is going to be coming later on today. Uh, and you may ask yourself, what's, what is the 2% for? Uh, it's going to be down here for this low pressure system. Kind of hard to see, uh, but pretty much you're right. You have this low pressure system down here to the, uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. It's going to be pushing a little bit to the northeast. Here's your low pressure system, and you can see uh, right along this low pressure system, you're going to have these thunderstorm, thunderstorms develop uh, out ahead of the surface flow. And of course, when you're near a surface flow, you're going to have a lot of vorticity, uh, a lot of curvature in the uh, atmosphere. So, again, 2% seems pretty warranted. And it looks like they're going to have that 2% extended back to the east towards Tallahassee. What radar is this? Uh, this is radar scope. I use it all the time on the road. And it, it is just such an amazing product. I know a lot of people uh, use Radar Omega. Uh, I don't use Radar Omega, but, again, it's not a bad product But um, from what I've seen. But hey, if Radar Scope wants, to, or if Radar uh, Scope or Radar Omega wants to sponsor me, hey, go right ahead. I'll use, I'll use uh, Radar Omega then. But no, I, I regardless, it they're both really good products. I'd check them out. But again, looks like we have some developing super cell. Actually, yeah, it looks like it's becoming super cellular a little bit. These little uh, clustered up super cells are already developing. Uh, just in Maine, just to the northwest of Greenville, Maine. And if we take a look on velocity, you can see it's not very, not very strong rotation, but however, uh, it's still there. So if we take a look at the, uh, yeah. So if we take a look at velocity, there's your inbound winds. These gray green colors, and of course, uh, are heading towards the radar. Red and uh, these red and uh, almost pink colors going away from the radar. 
and that is showing the counterclockwise rotation uh, here uh, with these thunderstorms. And again, these thunderstorms have been strengthening as time goes on. If we play a loop here, you can really see the uh, you could really see the uh, how these storms have progressed throughout the day. Yeah, it's thirty bucks. Yeah, it's it's very good. I on iOS and mobile they have um, pretty sure it is I think eight ninety nine. Yeah, so radar scope is a lot cleaner, in my opinion. You can actually change the color palette. Hold on a second. Let me show you guys, for example. I do not have the color palette uh, um, data uh, on my f uh, computer, but on my phone here, I'll show you guys on my phone if it can light or if it can kind of. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of hard to see, but you can see I have a different radar palette uh, or color palette on radar. That's what I use all the time. So, yeah, radar scope. You can change your color palettes if you upgrade to tier two, I think. And of course, I use, you know, I wouldn't say tier two or the tier ones are for everybody. But however, if you're definitely a storm chaser or a really big heavy weather enthusiast, uh, I would I would suggest getting tier two. Um, tier two. I mean, you can have longer frames, and, and this, and it also gives you the ability to look at the SPC outlooks. Um, as well so it has like a lot of different overlays and stuff like that and again uh, also you could like change and it also gives you a lot of other stuff as well there's a lot of this stuff and some of the options are not on here but I don't know if I should keep this as the categorical outlook so the entirety of of this or if I should keep the tornado risk or the tornado probabilities I'm not quite sure yet but let me know in the uh, let me know in the chat which one do you guys like better and I also don't know if I want to keep the 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 dual screen radar or uh, the single one or we could go with the four or the four I'm not too sure yet but I, th I think they all look good I think but the only problem is like changing, uh, changing different regions. It gets a little bit laggy once you like use four. So I I think. Yeah, I definitely think the watches and that should be free. But again, from a market marketing move, it's really smart if you have that availability to uh, availability from the SBC to use it. So I don't know. I definitely think it should be free. I think I think that's a really smart idea if it was free, because you'd have a lot more people from going from radar omega to uh, radar scope. Forgive me if you can hear my dogs; I, they go crazy all the time. We got we have two uh, bully pits and we have a uh, Chihuahua Shih Tzu mix. I love love those dogs to death, but with streaming, it's a real pain in the ass sometimes. Also, not sponsored, but. Dr. Pepper, I said this last stream, if any Dr. Pepper marketing managers or advertising managers or anybody that works with the Dr. Pepper company, I, I, I at this point, I need a sponsorship from you guys. Like, this this stuff is just like liquid gold at this point. If, if I ever make merch for this channel, I have to have something uh with dr pepper included in it at that point it's just a much I, I i got to gotta stay hydrated somehow maybe it's not the healthiest thing but I, i'm i'm typically more i'm typically a really healthy individual anyway i don't get really sick a whole lot my metabolism's extremely high so I can pretty much eat anything I want and I won't gain any weight from it. Again, it looks like we have another severe thunderstorm warning just got issued for this line. And they may, surprised earlier with how things are panning out, I'm surprised that they uh, didn't go with a severe thunderstorm watch. But you see this MCS or mesoscale convective system already pushing through to the north. Uh, severe thunderstorm warning heading towards the Montgomery radar. 
and it's going to be worn for 60 and quarters i'd probably say if i had to take a really good guess yep 60 mile an hour is a nickel size tail again no tour possible with this either so um looks like we are going to uh you know, it looks like we're going to keep on seeing these severe thunderstorm warnings as they get pushed to the north. Dr. Pepper with cream soda. I, I will be honest. I don't know if I like the cream soda uh, one or not. It's it's for me. It's very hit and miss. Like like when I took my first drink of it, I was I was very unsure. But Dr. Pepper, Dr. Pepper's goaded. I love it. I, I need a sponsorship from them, those guys. They produce, it's just, it's the best pop all around. We need, actually, would you guys want to see a pop tier list? Would you, would you guys want to see a pop tier list? I may actually do it. Since before, before we get to the watches and everything kicks off, we may, we may have to do a tier list. Well, may as well make the stream fun and enjoyable. Probably gonna get some hate for some of these tier lists, but that's okay. But actually, we may just do that. Let me let me let me find one that has good options. A lot of these I'm seeing have are very very. different okay so you drink dr pepper like beer <laughs> pretty much I, I i would never drink alcohol i would never do that but yes dr pepper is dr pepper's goaded there's no, there's no other way around it if you don't like got dr pepper or something wrong All right, so you know what? Oh, it is. Yeah, it's very smooth. A lot of people think it tastes like cough syrup, and, it, and I'm just like, what in the world? You know what? We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. So I, I, I'm probably gonna get a lot of flack for it, but that that's okay. We'll actually zoom out here for this. For the stream here so we'll go in order coca-cola all right listen coca-cola i think it's not that bad i drink it once in a while especially at work because the pepsi guy at our work uh takes a long time to fill it up but i would give coke b it's not a tier because sometimes if i drink a lot of it it just makes my teeth feel really nasty and and your teeth just feel grimy and disgusting and everything. It just don't feel good on your teeth. So for that, it's not a tier. Uh, you know, we're just not going purely on taste. We're going overall, the overall enjoyment and you know the just overall experience. So Coke, I'd probably put it at B tier. It's good, but it's not great. Pepsi, garbage can. It, it, it that tastes like cough syrup. That 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 right there is terrible. It's just such a gross. It, it it's just trash. How how could you like it? My my good buddy, my ride or die best friend, James Treft, uh, Storm Chaser that I know. Uh, he loves he loves Pepsi. It's his favorite drink. I I just don't see it. I don't see any good taste of it. it. Just makes me like cringe every time I drink it. Sprite. Sprite, I I would probably put it honestly at C tier. I I I think Sprite's not bad, but it it makes my mouth really uh it has that raw feeling after I drink it, and it just sticks around for about an hour. And I I just don't like that raw feeling. And it's just disgusting. Seven Up, it's just it's just the off brand, the Walmart version of Sprite. Like it's D tier. If there's no other thing to be said. Uh, this flavor of Mountain Dew I've never had. But this one, however. Uh, a tier. I haven't had it in forever. I know it's like a limited time type of Mountain Dew. But my uh, family actually got me hooked on it. And I was like, I, I, you know, the smell of it didn't really 
uh, I, it didn't really smell good, but it when you drank it, it actually you know tasted pretty good. So I, I'll put it in A tier. This one I've never had this flavor Mountain Dew. Voltage. It's it's between B and C for me. I'm gonna put it C. It's not bad, but it's not good. It's just mid. It's very mid. I, I, it's just not for me. The throwback Mountain Dew. I bought a case of it on accident. You may ask how it was on accident, but I thought it was just the same thing. And, <laughs> but it was like the real sugar kind. Uh, it's definitely F tier. It, it kind of has like the same, uh, the same after effect as what Coke has. And of course, it has the real sugar, and it's very, very. Like, it feels very weird on your teeth, and it just doesn't taste like Mountain Dew. Like, the actual current Mountain Dew. Baja Blast definitely SS tier. It's just fantastic. I Taco Bell, for me, is very mid, but the Baja Blast is, oh my gosh, it is so, so good. Lucas, I see your comments about it. I just didn't want to spoil it. That's why I didn't say anything. But no, the, the Baja Blast is just so, so good. <laughs> buy me new taste buds oh dude my taste buds are weird man they're so whack dr pepper we already know ss tier every time like i do like work like work outside and it's just like man i just need something to cool down with dr pepper just takes that that gross feeling out like instantly just so good. I've been drinking it for like, man, since like I could remember. A vanilla Coke, garbage can. Anything vanilla is trash. I, I love vanilla ice cream, but it's just with pop. It, you you just can't. You just can't put that in there. It just tastes nasty. Cherry Coke. It's in the same category as as regular coca-cola and here and here's why you know it, it it's really good it, for taste wise i'd say it's a tier but it's got to be on b tier too just because it, it just the, the teeth i can't get over how how bad your teeth feel after drinking coke like you have to go like brush your teeth after every time you drink coke cherry pepsi i would actually put it up to b it's not it doesn't have the same taste as what coke has but it, it you don't have that bad teeth feeling as what you do with coke with any coke crush trash any orange drink is terrible it just it, or, orange stuff is not my thing crush anything trash actually no it's not garbage can but it's left here fanta garbage it's just not that good fanta grape I'd put it in D. I, I, I don't drink it a whole lot, but when I do, it's it's just, it's near mid. Actually, I'll put it at mid. It's mid. It's, it's, it is what it is. Uh, this fan of flavor, never had these flavors. Oh, Sunkissed. I know a lot of people buy them at the stores, though. Mug Root Beer. Ah, this is a tough one for me. I'll, I, I, I'm going to put it at B tier. And, you know, it, I don't think it beats A&W, though. A&W is definitely better than Mug, in my opinion. It, root beer is one of those things where I don't drink a whole lot, but once I do drink it, it it's it, it's a banger. It's it, it always hits. I just don't know if, like, the root, the root beer taste of it is just so good. Mountain Dew Co... Or, Regular Mountain Dew. It's mid. I know a lot of people, depending on your region, I know like a lot of people in Appalachia, Eastern Ohio, and Ohio in general drinks Mountain Dew like it's like water. But for me, it's just the the acidic taste of it is just not my thing at all. It's just not my thing. Code Red. Definitely A tier. I like Code Red. It's one of my favorite Mountain Dew flavors up there with Baja Blast. 
Um, it, all I gotta say, it's really good. It's it doesn't have an acidic taste like what the normal Mountain Dew has. So. It's 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 all right. It's it's pretty good. G Canada Dry Ginger Ale. Hmm. I haven't had Canada Dry Ginger Ale in a long time, but however, uh, B tier. It's it's. I can't put it to A because I haven't had it in a while. But the times I've had at it, or the times I've had it, it was pretty good. I'm big into ginger ale stuff, so haven't had any of this. Mellow yellow, Walmart version of Mountain Dew, garbage can, trash. It it just it's it's too much. I think I, I just don't like it. Uh, the Squirts, Sunkiss. I haven't had the Vault. I haven't had the Jaritos. I had never had those either. Diet trash. Why why would you drink a diet? It, it, it tastes like flat pop. That's all it is, is flat pop at that point. There's no taste in it. Like, I, it, there's no point. Mr. Pib, again, trash. It's not that good. The rip, the rip-off brands are not good. Barks? Hmm. Bargs, I'm going to put it S tier. And we'll actually move... I, I forget what flavor this is called. I Please forgive me, Mountain Dew. But th those two are getting moved up the S tier. Bargs, absolutely silver. That, that's the best. That is the king of root beers. It goes Mug, A&W, and then Bargs. I, I absolutely agree. And then Voltage. Man, I haven't had Voltage in a long time. I... Ugh, I don't know. That's that's a really tough one too. Man, let me. Let, I gotta. I gotta think about this one. I, I'm not too sure. Uh, I, I'll be fair and put it at C tier. I again, I haven't had it in a while. Actually, I just won't go ahead and read it because I haven't had it in a while. So there's my tier list. SS tiers, definitely Baja Blast, Dr. Pepper, S tier Bargs, and that Mountain Dew flavor that uh, I forget the name of because I'm stupid. Uh, Code Red, A and W and A. Th th those are my top ones. I, I, I think that's a pretty solid list. Feel free to disagree with any of those. I just, I, I, that's my tier list. I think we need to do, well, actually, here, real quick, we'll go check back and look at the radar here. And again, we have no watches yet at all. However, severe thunderstorm warnings continues with this MCS for uh, 60 mile an hour winds, as we just mentioned earlier. And again, I know a lot of people like to be, like, uh, like on topic a whole lot, but... Hey, you gotta have fun sometimes, man. You can't just be serious all the time. You know, life, life's too short to be really serious, you know what I mean? But it looks like the supercell, it looks like uh, this is merging as one supercell. And we can really see this really area, really strong area of rotation here, uh, just to the north of Greenville. And it looks like that southern cell is really starting to become dominant out of the both of those. And you can see it's starting to. Uh, Starting to merge is just us one big supercell. Severe thunderstorm warning is in effect. 60 mile winds and quarter size hail. And it does have a tornado possible tag. Uh, so as these supercells merge and become one dominant supercell, it's going to go off to the east towards I-95. Uh, towards the Sherman, uh, Millnocket areas, just to, just to the west of uh, 75. So that's going to be something we're going to have to watch out for. Um... We're gonna keep a live, we're gonna keep a live look on these thunderstorms. And also, if you're new to the channel, my name's Norman Smith. I'm a storm chaser, a meteorology student, uh, and I, I've been chasing for the past two years. And um, you know, I, I've always been fascinated with tornadoes and severe weather. So if I'm not storm chasing, if I'm not, I'm not uploading tornado videos, 
I'm going to be uh, streaming live coverage. So if you guys are new, welcome. Glad you're here. And uh, if you have as much interest as I do about severe weather, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. So we're also watching these supercells, potential supercells down here across the uh, New Hampshire main border. Uh, just to the northwest of the Portland main radar. Yeah, and we'll take a look at ZDR. ZDR is something that I instantly look for when thunderstorms develop. And wow, you can see a really explosive updraft highly highlighted by this red and white collar. Um, anything you see in blue is a uh, weakening updraft. But um, all these blues that you see is just on the outside of the main updraft. What you have to look for is like right on the updraft or on these brighter colors to see if these storms are actually intensifying. And indeed, they are, as you can see, highlighted by the red. Oh, you're Jared from Stormtrack? Oh, well, nice to see you, man. Glad to be a part. Glad that you're part of the stream. They got issued the watch? I don't see a watch. But you can definitely see these thunderstorms already developing just to the west on the MC, western side of the MCD. But do you guys think we should do another tier list? I think we, we need to do another tier list. Because we probably won't be able to do one here soon, but... Maybe the tier list will draw away viewers because all my trash takes. <laughs> Actually, for this, we'll go double screen. We'll go with the double monitor. Let's see, watching this developing uh, cell merger of these two supercells uh, in Maine, which is really weird. First stream, first stream with the new setup, we've had a uh, $20 donation, and we've had uh, a live coverage in Canada. And now we switch from Canada to Maine and we're still in Canada. So really weird way to start off the live coverage streams. Pet, hey, it, it, as long as there's a tornado threat, it don't matter where it is. We're going, we're going to cover it. So again, watching, just monitoring these supercells, monitoring, uh, uh, the progress of these big lightning uptick with these storms as well. So now, if it's not producing a tornado, it's still you're still going to have a threat for damaging winds on large hail. And we'll see if any uh, reports come out as this starts to head into more of a populated area. Not sure if there's any storm chasers on this. I can't pull up spotter network on my computer, unfortunately. Actually, I may be able to. Uh, but I'm, I'm not sure here. I'm not sure. That's okay. So, we're going to keep watching the storms, but uh, we're going to do another tier list. A lot of people seem to like these tier lists. We'll do, we'll do one that's really controversial. Okay, this new tier list that I'm looking at right now, someone made a D and an E tier, but they didn't make an F tier. It just makes no sense. Yeah, let's look at the selections, see what they have. Uh, man, they do not have good selections for this tier list. We're going to do fast food tier list. Let me... Uh, All right, so this is going to get a lot of flack. I know, I know. But we're going to do restaurants and fast food. This, this, is, this is going to be one that's going to make a lot of people mad. And some of these, everyone's probably going to be like, you haven't ate here before? But we'll get started. Cinnabon, I have never ate at Cinnabon. 
I haven't ate uh, Wingstop either. Chipotle, garbage. Absolutely garbage. I ate there one time. One time. Uh, in between classes at college. Went with a, buddy, with a couple buddies of mine fall semester, and it was terrible. Absolutely terrible. It was just egregiously terrible. Just so, it, it's garbage. Just straight up garbage. The food wasn't good. Uh, and I, I, I'm a really big uh, Mexican food lover. I love Mexican food. But that, that place was just not good. Bro, had a lot of bad stomach problems after that. Won't go too much in depth with that. But it just wasn't a good time overall. Pizza Hut, definitely A tier. One of my favorite uh, favorite uh, pizza places to go to, honestly. Do not know why there's S and SS, but we'll make it we'll make it more simplified. Pizza Hut's really good. I love their breadsticks. Their breadsticks really kind of uh, leap this to the next level, I think. Because if we're talking about just pizza alone, I definitely think it's roughly B tier. But th those breadsticks, man, those breadsticks are just so good. I, I got to put it at A tier. Cheesecake Factory, never been to Cheesecake Factory. 7-Eleven, I don't know why that's on there. Um, I, 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 That's a gas station. I don't know why gas station's on there for food. Church has never been to. Dave & Buster's, haven't been to forever. Denny's, oh, hold on. Let me... Let me delete the Eero. I'd say D tier for Denny's. D for Denny's. I Every time I see a Denny's, I, I just don't go there. I've ate there several years ago with my grandparents, and I, I just do not like it. Once I have a bad experience with the place, I just don't go back. Because, you know, I, I just don't want to take the risk. Like, their eggs, like, were, I remember, really dry. They, were just, they weren't soft. They were just really dry. Left, and it felt like they were just left out for a long time. And it just really wasn't good. Jimmy Jimmy John's garbage. I Again, almost same story with the same people. Uh, the next week, actually, we went to Jimmy John's, literally across the street from Chipotle. And it was terrible. They messed up all of our orders. The bread tastes like cardboard. Like moist cardboard. It's just disgusting. It's just terrible. KFC garbage. That place is a gr that, that place is an absolute grease ball. If all you eat is like chicken, you just pull out the chicken and like the, the like the skin of the, the the meat is just all greasy and just disgusting. It's not good. It's it's just not good at all. And, and it's to the point where I. Every time I look at KFC, I just cringe. <laughs> Raisin Canes, B tier. I I like Raisin Canes a lot. Uh, it's it's personally one of my favorite fast food places to go to. The cane sauce is just really good. You know, their their chicken's not that greasy. There's a little bit of grease on it, but there's just not too much to the point where you just like cringe or just think it's all trash, and it just doesn't upset your stomach either. Uh, Bojangles, never been to. Huddle House, I've seen Huddle Houses, but I've never been to. No idea what that is. Culver's, definitely S tier. I, I love Culver's. Uh, they are they've only messed up my order one time, but the, the crinkle cut fries and the burger is just spot on. They don't over grease anything, and especially with one thing I think about with burger places a whole lot is you know i i see if uh, a really big criteria for me is see if they have uh see if they over grease everything because they over grease anything like you may as well just you may as well just put up one of these like lower end tiers because they're just not that good ponderosa definitely f tier they have not been around here in my area for a long time uh and it's very, very disgusting. I, I just don't like buffets because mostly because they leave their food out for a long time, and that's just not my thing. Waffle House. Godly. Waffle House is definitely godly. I, I Like, they... Uh, just the environment is really nice. A lot of nice people there. 
No, a lot of people meme, um, like, make memes about it. Like, everyone argue. Like, I see the memes all the time where people argue and fight in, like, Waffle House. And I've never had anything close to that. Uh, ever, everyone's super nice. Swanson's in Akron has the best burgers out of all of them, in my opinion. I have never had that before. I, if I go up to Akron sometime this year, I'm definitely going to definitely gonna keep that in mind because it... I, again, I don't go up there a whole lot, but next time I do, I'm going to check that out. Yeah, Waffle House, I, I'm a really big breakfast person now. Uh, sometimes I don't eat right away in the morning, but just breakfast food in general. Like, breakfast food in general, I love. And Waffle House, especially, like, in the evening. Oh, so good. Definitely godly for me. Auntie Anne's, F tier. They have one in my mall locally. Terrible. It's just not that good. All the people that work there are just really just not nice. And pretzels aren't my thing anyway. Sonic, man. I know we're starting off on a really negative note with this tier list. But hold on a second. I think we uh, have some breaking news, actually. Uh, I'm just now noticing here. We'll get back to the tier list here in a second. Severe Thunderstorm Watch. Now issued. Now in effect for... Uh, portions of new uh, new york state all the way down to northern virginia severe thunderstorm watch uh pr for primary threats including scattered damaging winds up to 70 and hail up to an inch and a half so if we take a look here uh currently have already ongoing thunderstorms developing in central pa uh near Har just to the west of harrisburg um again nothing severe yet which is real which is a good sign but uh, that will be coming later on, especially as peak heating uh, uh, is starting to uh, take into effect. Typically, peak heating throughout the day is around two to five. So, uh, and again, we're we're just getting started with today. Severe thunderstorm warning uh, still in in effect for Central Maine with this uh, supercell. And you can see now that this supercell is really starting to take shape here, and it's all discrete, all by itself. However, there is a storm down to the south. I uh, don't know if it's going to be heading northeast to interfere with it. But you notice how the supercell is actually taking uh, the mean storm motion and turning right. So that's another thing to watch out for. And you can see the supercell is starting to head, or the storm down here is starting to head to the northeast. Um, and the supercell is going to be chugging along east. So looks like this may outbeat this storm. In terms of it not merging but again we will see but you can start to see looks like two areas of circulation as the as these super supercells are merging one to the north oh, let me try to pause it here yep so we have uh and i expect this northern stuff to diminish because it's as you know again this is starting to merge with the southern cell typically the southern cells become the most dominant ones in a cell merger typically um and again, you have your circulation down here as well. So we're going to be watching this. It is severe thunderstorm warned with a tornado possible on it. So very possible. We could see a tornado warning for our first tornado warning of the day here in central uh, Maine. Uh, nothing else going on, really. Uh, same severe thunderstorms uh, pushing through uh, southwestern Georgia and southeastern Alabama. Uh, mostly all these are warned for 60 and nickels. So, nothing going on. What is... I did not see this. Random severe thunderstorm warning clear in Texas. Holy crap. What What is going on? Severe thunderstorm warning looks like now for the Texas-Mexico uh, border near Falcon, Falcon Heights, Texas. So, quarter-sized hail and 60-mile-an-hour winds. Very, very interesting. Very interesting. So, we'll be keeping these storms. Uh, we'll be monitoring these storms as the day goes on. And very well, we could have our first tornado up here in Maine for the day. But we'll go back. Since it's not really too active, we'll go back to the tier list. We started off, or ended off on Sonic. And Sonic for me is one of those ones that are is, is also very hit and miss depending on which Sonic you go to. So for that, I'll put it C tier. It's mid. The milkshakes are okay. 
but the food itself is the food itself is probably D tier, but the C tier, the the slushies and milkshakes definitely elevate it to C. Sabero, I have not had Sabero in like six years, so I'm not gonna rate it. Firehouse subs, uh, definitely trash. I love subs. Uh, subs is one of my favorite foods of all time. And if you mess up a sub, it's kind of it. That's just very disrespectful to me. I every time my parents have brought one home, especially like after work, if they go out and they bring like food back, and the the, the past several times they've brought back firehouse, my bread is all like, uh, my bread is very too like moist and wet and just it's nasty. And the steak, I usually get a steak sub every time I go there, any sub place. And it's just, it's not, the steak wasn't that good. It just tasted like just, it, it, ta it just tasted really bad for steak. It's just like a steak patty, so just not my thing. Donato's, F tier. I haven't had those in about a couple of years, just not that good. Um, it, it's, it just doesn't have any flavor. It's very bland. Arby's, definitely B tier. Arby's may go to A tier, but we're going to stick it at B. Now, if they had the pizza sliders, the pizza sliders from Arby's, however, they took it away. Why would you take that away? That was one of their best things on the menu. That in itself is godly. But since they took it away, we're, we, we're going to have to stick it to B. B tier is just... It, that's just where it's going to have to be. I love their roast beef. I love their curly fries. But what's not making me want to take it to A is just because of it's it's not like sometimes they overcook their fries and it's really crunchy. I, I like fries that are, you know, chewy and, you know, not obviously completely soft, but just have that perfect balance of crunchy on the outside, chewy on the inside type thing. Sometimes they just overcook them. So for that, I have to downgrade to B. A&W. Baskin Robbins, I've never been to these before. Ben and Jerry's, never been to. A lot of these I've seen, but I've never stopped at. Bob Evans. Honestly, I I, I would say F tier, but they have grown on me a whole lot, so I'd put it C tier. Um, yeah, Bob Evans is a thing where I, I originally got food poisoning from Bob Evans. And it, it, it was immediately F tier. But I went back here not that long ago. And honestly, the food was really good. The breakfast is very good. Um, the only problem is their daytime food is not that good. It's a, it's, it's a bre for me, it's only a breakfast only place. So for that, it's, it's, for breakfast speaking, definitely A tier. But like, at their afternoon meals, it's definitely F tier garbage. So we're just going to meet it in the middle, put it at C. Burger King. Ah, oh, man, this is another tough one too, man. I got, I, I got to think about. I'm gonna, I'm gonna think about that one for a second, chat. So we're, I'm gonna leave that here. I'm gonna set it up here, on the top of the list. B dubs. I just had B dubs yesterday. B tier. It's not A tier because it's too expensive. That place is very expensive. Yeah, Bob, the Bob Evans, and yeah, that, yeah. It's, Bob Evans is very hit and miss. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. And Buffalo Wild Wings, it's, it's, their fries are just like, like the width of like this. They are just so tiny. Their burgers are actually not bad, but, and their wings are not bad either. So, but it's just too expensive. It's, it's just really expensive compared to everything else on this list. So for that, i got to put it to B tier. Captain D's. Garbage. The green... It's just... I do not like... I, I do not like seafood. Seafood is just garbage. And it's just like... Captain D's... If anyone asks me how to compare Captain D's... For me, it's like... Think about this. Think about KFC and the grease... But like a seafood, greasy version of KFC. That's exactly what Captain D's is. Garbage. Uh, don't know why Casey's on here because it's like a gas station. Checkers and rallies. 
man, I have not seen these things in forever, but man, I gotta, I gotta say, the last time I remember eating these things are definitely B tier too. Just really good. Nothing's too greasy with those usually. Cheddars? Mmm. For me, the one, the one closest to me is not that good. A lot of people complain about it. I'll leave it out of this because I haven't had it in a while. Because I just can't remember how it tasted. Chick-fil-A, godly. Nothing needs to be said because every it's expensive, I know. And I know everyone's going to be like, well, why you just put B-dubs at B because it's expensive or more expensive. But hear me out. Chick-fil-A, you know, we're talking about the overall atmosphere and experience. I know B-dubs has a good atmosphere. But, again, there's a couple things wrong with their food, too, sometimes. But Chick-fil-A, I've had no problem with Chick-fil-A at all. None. Zero zip nada. None. The people that work there are really nice. Yeah, it is expensive, but the Chick-fil-A sauce, very, very good. It's just perfect. And, the, again, the overall experience is nice. People are just ex extremely nice. Food's good. The waffle fries, for crying out loud. That's, oh, that's just godly. Uh, Chili's, I haven't been to forever. Chuck E. Cheese, I haven't been to since I was like eight. Steak and Shake. Hmm. A tier. I, I originally had it in my older list I've done with my friends. I had an S tier, but it's it's downgraded a little bit because it's, it's again, for me, it's gone a little bit too greasy. And their fries are really thin, but they're really good, though. Their milkshakes are definitely S tier godly, but um, they're, they're extremely cheap compared to everything else on this list. They're very cheap. Um, but i definitely say it's i definitely say it's right there A tier for sure. Uh, don't know why Coca-Cola is on here. That just don't make any sense. Del Taco Cookout. Nope, I haven't been to any of those. Domino's. D tier. And, and here's why. Again, Domino's for me hasn't been really that greasy. I love their breadsticks, but the problem is with though with the Domino's is just because it, it just gives me bad it just gives me bad problems after eating it, and it, it lasts for a while. I don't want that. Even if the food is good, actually we'll be generous. We'll bump it, bump it up to see because of the food, but the after effects of Domino's ain't that good. So we're gonna put it C. Again, we even out the odds. Even out the pros and cons, should say. Longhorns. Longhorns is definitely A tier. I love Longhorns. Longhorns have recently came to like my local area, and man, is it good. It, it the steak is always cooked right. Uh, every time I've been there, um, and you know I've I've had no problems with it. Um, just, no, haven't been there. Haven't been there. Five guys. Definitely S tier. Actually, hold on, hold on. Uh, we'll put it in A tier for now. It, because of the grease. They are heavily greasy, but for some reason, their grease does not give me problems afterwards. It doesn't... My stomach is usually okay. After the fact. After five, guys. But it's just like, every time you eat it, it seems like you're plate just keeps getting bigger and bigger i don't know what it is maybe it's the fries because they just overload you with fries all the time but still very very good crispy cream s tier love crispy cream my the nearest one is like clear up and like to my north about two hours but man every time i go there it is just so good i'm I, i'm big on donuts and dessert oh it's so good uh let's see where are we at? Hardee's? D tier. I do not like Hardee's. Again, it's one of the situations I haven't ate there in a couple years, but because of that, uh, I, I, I just don't want to go back. Like, once something just affects you so bad, I, you just don't want to go back. Like, why would you go back if you've had a bad experience? So, for me, I got to put it D tier. Hunt Brothers Pizza. That's like the peach you see at the gas stations. And honestly, they're B tier. Especially on storm chases, if you have to hurry up or are craving pizza like on the go. It's very good. 
like it's not overly greasy their pizza's great especially like after school at a gas station like there's a gas station right across from my old high school i just i'll just drive there every single time after class and go get pizza with some with some buddies or um and it's just so good man there's no problems with it they don't it's just not there's just no problems i don't think a whole lot with it although the taste sometimes i should say is a little bit a little bit iffy but again it's gas station pizza you really can't criticize it too much um let's see i hop i got put i hop at a tier i i hop was originally b or c but i've ate i've ate at i hop a lot recently and honestly it's really not that bad um sometimes though they're pancakes i'm not a big pancake guy I like waffles over pancakes probably probably could tell that just looking off this tier list but pancakes just make me feel bloated and just disgusting afterwards so but other than that i hop's really good i i like i hop um hungry hungry jacks in and out never had in and out jack in the box never had uh, jason's deli the crusty crab definitely asked here crabby patties are just fantastic there's just no other word there's no other thing that needs to be explained uh little caesars uh, man i don't know if i should put it above dominoes because that's that's a really tough call i'd probably put it at c tier too because it, it's the same boat as dominoes right just you just get problems after that Yeah, I definitely get that. Yeah, I I absolutely understand that. I hop, I I understand because like I hop for me used to be a really mixed a mixed fifty fifty, because I originally had I wish I can find it on my phone, but originally I had I hop at C or D, but I here recently then like the past five times I've been there it's been really really solid. Uh, Applebee's trash garbage why everybody in the chaser community hypes up applebee's but it's so bad their steaks are just like trash they 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 either undercook or overcook your steak it's not juicy and tender it's just dry i hate a dry steak that just irritates me bad like that, that that's just a big no-no you can't do that so for that they're definitely definitely f tier or not F tier, they're garbage. Long John Silver, garbage. Same same reasons for Captain D's. Greasy seafood, disgusting. Makes me just throw up. Want to throw up every time I think about it. Loves the gas station. I love 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 gas stations, but it's it's a gas station. Too. It's a, not a you know restaurant or fast food. McDonald's. I just had McDonald's today just to get something to eat. And honestly, I I. I think it's okay, but then there's times that it's bad. Like right now, I kind of feel bloated, and I just don't feel that great. Not sick, I just don't, you know, it's meh. But I'll put it, it's mid. It's very mid. I love their fries. Talking about fries, it'd be like S tier, but sometimes their burgers are not that good. Um... Let's see. Moe's never been there. Mr. Beast Burger. Never been to Mr. Beast Burgers. Outback Steakhouse. My goodness. Give me A tier, please. I Again, steaks are, for me, always juicy, just right. And talk about their bread. I usually fill up on the bread half the time before my main food even comes out. So, that alone, it's just A tier. A lot of people are nice. Uh, the servers I've had the past several years have just been really nice no problems a little bit on the expensive side but the, the the food is worth it though in my personal opinion so for that uh, for the quality of the food and the good atmosphere gotta put it a tier hooters i haven't been to hooters in a very long time so i was like <laughs> uh and golden corral also known as the golden commode because it's garbage throw it down the commode most buffets are trash they like imagine imagine eating food that's being left out for a long time why would you do that like that's just not good you it's, you know you leave food out for a long time and it just loses the taste and it's just not that good it's all yeah it's all you can eat but is it really worth it at the end 
No. No way. Oh, I forgot CC. CC's definitely D tier. I haven't. It's not that good for me. Um, I haven't had it in a couple years, but I do remember tasting it. And it was just kind of like whatever. Uh, Joe's Crab Shack never been to Crystal. Man, this place is low. Key. Oh, that's the wrong one. Crystals low key slaps. I like it. B tier. It's not A tier because um, it's just not there. Sometimes their burgers are like really small, and it just bugs me. Because like if I'm getting a burger, I want a nice sized patty with my burger. And it for me, it's just I I just don't I just don't like having small portions of food. So for that, even though the taste is good, I I just gotta put it at B tier because because just the cons with it. Um. Dairy Queen. Man, C tier. Because hear, hear me out. The food, I do not like their food. But their blizzards and their ice cream is amazing. So again, a lot of these places like Domino's, Bob Evans, Dairy Queen, it's very, it's you're even out the pros and cons. Their pros are really high, but the cons are super low. That's, that's the problem with these C tiers. Other than Domino's and Little Caesars, actually, other than Little Caesars, but so for that, I, I'm I'm putting it at mid. Subway, definitely a tier because a lot of people hate Subway, but but for me, it's and it's a little bit expensive, but I, I love getting subs. I'm a big sub guy, so they use they. I've never had any problem with Subways either, believe it or not. I've heard a lot of bad stories about them, but. Um, I, again, after school, I'd always go to Subway in high school, and it, that's just one of my few favorite places to go. Yeah, there's no sheets on this list. That's really surprising. I, I love sheets as a gas station. They're just fantastic. Uh, let's see. Donut King Taco Bell. C I definitely put it C tier. It's definitely mid. It's cheap, but sometimes it, it's it's either hit or miss. Depends on how fresh their food is. But actually, here I'll bump it up to B tier only because of the Baja Blast. Baja Blast is my favorite favorite pop next to Dr Pepper. So for that reason, I'm bumping up to B tier. Panera. I I would say probably oh this is tough S tier I I love Panera and a lot of, a lot of my friends called me girly because that because it's most a lot of, like girls logo there and but for me though it's just like the Panera mac and cheese so good the drinks like the the papaya green tea amazing like it, it's just so good like. That place is just fantastic. Even like the the cookies and the the chocolate chip cookies and all, oh, it's just so good. It's real. Panera is extremely expensive, but in my opinion, it's worth it. Like a large bowl of mac and cheese is like ten bucks with a large drink, but it's worth it. I think. Zach's or hold on, whoa. Popeyes. D tier. I do not like Popeyes because their chicken. Their chicken's okay, but once, like, their sides are not that good. Their biscuits, I do not like their biscuits at all, in my in my personal opinion. Their biscuits, for me, is just not that good. Um, they're really dry, bland. Their macaroni and cheese is kind of bland, too. So, for that, it's got to go to D for me. Let's see what's next. Zaxby's. I like Zaxby's. I've had it my first time this year on a storm chase in Birmingham. Really good. I love Zaxby's. May go to A tier. Actually, you know what? I'll go to A tier with Zaxby's. It is that good. The chicken's just cooked perfectly. It's not too greasy. Um, the fries, like the 
the crinkle cut fries, fantastic. I like it. Not not it's not S tier godly, but it's it's clo it's close to S tier, believe it or not. Cracker Barrel. Oh my gosh, D tier. I I don't like Cracker Barrel. Their breakfast is is good, but again, the same problem falls with Dairy Queen and Bob Evans. Once you get to like their afternoon stuff, it's terrible. It's just not good. No flavor, in my opinion. Olive Garden. Definitely another A-tier candidate. I love Olive Garden. I love Italian food. Uh, their breadsticks alone are godly. But uh, the last time I did go there, it was kind of mid. Not going to lie. It wasn't that good. Uh, it, it, just, it just didn't really satisfy my taste buds. So, for that, I, I just got to put it at A-tier. Still uh, not saying it's bad. It's still good. Um, but it just not that great. Also, new update in terms of the weather. We're getting things kickstarted, so we may have to pause on the tier list. But Severe Thunderstorm Watch now in effect for uh, East Central or the Central Northern portions of New York State, along with Maine into uh, along into Maine and New Hampshire and Vermont. I'm sure there's also a tornado threat that is also noted. A tornado 2 is possible with this. Again, tornado watch uh, is also now in effect for portions of... Uh, hold on, let me, let me pull this up here. Yep, tornado watch now in Canada, uh, just to the northeast, or the north of Callias, or, or south of Edmonston. Or, yeah, Tornado Watch for New Brunswick. So the eastern side of New Brunswick is also now under Tornado Watch, as well as Quebec. So east of Montreal, you're also in a Tornado Watch as well. Severe thunderstorm warning with the supercell continues. Uh, and again, still undergoing a cell merger. This one's taking its sweet old time, but you can see. Uh, you, hold on, let me go and pull this up here. And you could really see this little hook appendage starting to dig down. And that's inflow notch is starting to try to to go into the thunderstorm, but you can see it's a little bit a little bit disorganized. The hook's not really all that well developed. Actually, I'm sorry. Let me let me just put one. There we go. So you can see the hook is just not really uh, not really that um, well organized. But again, it's still under a cell merger. Still has time to develop. Let's take a look at velocity. Again, still noting that broad area of rotation um, just to the west of Millinocket or just to the northeast of Greenville. Still going, still under a severe thunderstorm warning, um, but and also a tornado possible tag along with that. Go down here to the southern part of Maine. Uh, thunderstorms are developing. Uh, it looks like a little tiny supercell just because the shape of it, but it's probably not. Yeah, it's definitely not. But still see uh, scattered thunderstorms developing across southwest Maine. And that'll be uh, going towards the I-95 corridor. I, the I-95 corridor today is going to see some pretty potent severe weather, it looks like. And again, severe thunderstorm watch issued uh, for the mid-Atlantic. Um, we'll see how long this goes for. For about six hours until uh, 9 p.m. Eastern. So long day ahead. Uh, for sure. Uh, so we're going to be here until these watches expire, till everything just goes away. Um, severe thunderstorm warning actually looks like in Virginia. Nah, that's a little bit too close. Did not mean to do that. Yep, severe thunderstorm warning now for the I-77 corridor between near Woodslawn, Hillsville. Uh, and this watch will be going on for the next 40 minutes. Uh, for portions of uh Pulaski County, Floyd County, Wythe County, uh, Central Carroll County, and North Central Patrick County until 315 uh, Eastern. 60 mile winds and quarters looks to be your th main threats. No tornado threat with with these at all. Um, again, as I said earlier today, this is mostly going to be a hail damaging wind threat further south you go. However, again, there is oh new mesoscale discussion just got posted. Or that may be the same one that uh, is by fault. 
thought that was a different one because it lasted. Looks like it lasted a little bit longer. Severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, new severe thunderstorm warning for the eastern side of this line here, um, near I-75, just south of Macon, Georgia. And we'll go ahead and look at some of these damaging wind reports too. 60 mile an hour penny sized hail. So if you live near Leesburg, uh, it's it's right on top of you. But if you live northeast of Leesburg near Warwick, uh, get ready. Uh, Winona Cordell, get ready for some heavy winds. Make sure to take all the stuff you like the the toys or the the uh, the not uh, the stuff that you don't have like uh, fastened down to your uh, like house or it's not hooked up to anything. Make sure to bring that inside because that could be a hazard and used as like flying debris or it could just be flying into your neighbor's yard and that's just a really big pain in the rear end to uh, to fix. So. Make sure to go ahead and uh, bring everything inside for that. Um, and then again, oh, we got some special uh, marine warnings just to the south. As these storms are coming on shore. It looks like a linear complex starting to make its way up to the Florida Peninsula here. Again, it looks like these are briefly rotating, but it's really hard to, to tell off of a radar. It's really far away. So we are going to be monitoring these storms. This event is only just the, this is only just the beginning with these storms. This is the main storm that we're really going to watch out for is this one right here in Maine as a, a tornado possible tag is associated with it. ZDR is still looking somewhat healthy. So I would assume this supercell won't go on for a little bit. But we'll we'll take a look at the um we'll take a look at the uh environment that the supercell is going off in actually so we'll take a look at the we'll go back to the tier list here later so but here's the uh current meso analysis and we'll take a look at the thermodynamic profile and you can see this supercell is really riding uh you know roughly around 500 mix layer cape here's your thousand uh, let me find, no, there's your 500 line. So it's just now going out of the 500 line. But you can see the storms, main storms really fire within the next two to four hours here in Quebec. Uh, just east of Montreal. And these will be, it also looks like there could be a couple renegades out in Maine. And this could be a pretty big tornado threat for today as well. Again, 2,000 mix layer, really good. Supercell composites, not something I really bank on, but I guess it is an okay parameter to use. Uh, values up to six, so pretty decently high parameters here. Uh, zero to one kilometer SRH. It is getting better to some better wind shear, but there is not a lot for this thing to work with. Which makes sense to know why this thing hasn't really drilled down to the lower levels, because there's just not really that much low level wind shear. Uh, bulk shear. Bulk shear. Still on a really good high bulk shear. 40 knots of bulk shear. So this storm is, again, still sustaining itself. Not really good in the cheat code range. Going out. No vorticity. No 0 to 3 kilometers. So this could be just a supercell that just chugs on and doesn't produce anything. That's definitely looking like the more likely option. But definitely could still see a tornado threat later on today. There's just a tornado watch in uh, New Brunswick and also in Quebec. Again, we'll take a look at surface observations since we are that far north. Getting high 60 dues already. 70 to 64, 72 over 67 in Maine. Very good uh, temperature dew point spreads. So... We'll actually go back to the... Something's going on yet. We're going to go back to this. So, we left off... Olive Garden, I believe. Dunkin' Donuts. I'm going to be honest. I, I like Dunkin', but it's not there in Krispy Kreme. But I'll put it in B tier. They're red velvet. I'm a big red velvet fan. So, But the red velvet seasonal stuff is very, very good. In, in my personal opinion. Uh... Papa John's, F. It's not garbage, but it's F tier. Papa John's for me has really declined over the past several years. It's just greasy slob of just 
just grease on their pizzas and it's just not that good red lobster it's seafood trash put it in the garbage nobody likes seafood ruby tuesday trash oh no trash 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 not that good same same reasons for applebee's it's just not that good try to roll through this quick sonic if i put sonic it's why is there two sonics what that don't make any sense uh texas roadhouse s tier hey do i need to explain why i mean they're, they're oh my gosh their rolls are so good uh their bread and butter rolls cinnamon bun oh their cinnamon butter with their rolls oh so good steak i've had no problem with their steak uh wait waiters are always really nice um they always bring out your food fast in a timely manner and again they're a little bit expensive but man is their food good they're always packed but there's a reason why they're always packed too it's because they're really good uh Wendy's, same treatment as Bob Evans, Dairy Queen, and Sonic. It's very hit and miss. Their afternoon foods are not that good, in my personal opinion. But, however, their, uh, like, breakfast is fantastic. If we're just rating these places off of breakfast, it's definitely S tier. Maybe godly tier, but we gotta put it at C. Whataburger definitely s tier for whataburger i do not have them around here in the east coast but man every time i go out west i have to have a whataburger every time every time white castle i have not had white castle in forever so that would be my tier list right here waffle house chick-fil-a definitely take the list take the top of the list so radar here real quick again watching this severe thunderstorm warning uh in maine watching this discrete supercell form already taken shape most and we will see if it becomes a tornado producing storm here So, no, it looks like the, so, yeah, so it looks like there's a, I'm looking here on my phone here and it looks like there is a, uh, looks like there's a tornado threat tomorrow. Or a bigger tornado threat tomorrow with the new day two outlook so let's go take a peek at that real quick uh, let me pull up the SPC storm prediction center website so there just above the my webcam there to big, large 2% for most of uh, southwest, south-central Texas. Uh, t uh, Storm Prediction Center also noting a couple tornadoes are possible tomorrow. So, we are going to be, looks like we are going to be streaming tomorrow as well uh, for this setup. Again, we can to actually take a look at these watches. We'll take a look at these watch probs. Twenty percent of a of two or more tornadoes, very low. Five percent of a strong tornado, so very low tornado probs. But then again, tornado probs are still there. So again, it's something to uh, take note of. So again. 
Uh, severe thunderstorm watches extend all the way from Maine clear down to northern Virginia. And it looks like all the severe thunderstorm warnings in, uh, in Georgia have expired, which is really good. However, we still have a couple severe thunderstorms developing here in Virginia. And it looks like we have a little mini supercell here, actually. Just to the south of Lynchburg. See? Very, very textbook uh, signature of a mini supercell. There's your hook echo with your inflow notch starting to form right here. Again, that's where your center of rotation is going to be at. And again, velocity is a little bit delayed, but you could still very well see the center of rotation. Again, I don't expect a tornado threat to be down here, but however, uh, any you can still have some rotating storms out ahead of this as well. We will shift on back up north. It looks like the supercell... Considering how it's uh, going so far, it's not in really good shear, low-level shear. It's really kind of just dis like not dissipating, but it's just not really getting its act together. However, there is still area circulation that we need to watch out for, just to the uh, west of Medway along I-95. So this storm is going to be heading east-northeast towards Sherman and Stacyville. Again, it is taking that northeastward northeastward track as well. So. That's something we're going to have to watch out for. So again, also watching the development for these thunderstorms down here in southwest Maine. Again, nothing a whole lot going on down here in this area as of now, but the better thermodynamic profiles and the better uh, parameters overall are, are still down here in New Hampshire, southwest Maine. And eventually, as the day goes on, your moisture is going to get transported up north. All your moisture, all your best ingredients are going to form supercell thunderstorms and severe weather should, your main severe weather should fire uh, just to the east of Montreal. New, possibly down to New Hampshire. Um, this is this is the zone that we're going to really watch out for. Actually, here that was that was a little bit too far east. This is the area we're going to watch out for for any tornado development today. My, this is the best. This is the best area for today. It's, it's definitely going to be right here. In my opinion. But again, this really well established supercell still still trucking, still going on. ZDR still seems to be doing pretty decent here. Um, still see the big red contours, the red collars right there, indicating this updraft is still present. It's still healthy. And we still have a, you know, still showing rotation right here. Uh, still showing a, also probably still a broad, very strong low uh, mesocyclone aloft. Again, this severe thunderstorm warning is warned for 60 mile an hour winds, a quarter size tail moving east at 35 miles an hour. And again, it looks like they took off the tornado possible tag on it, but still things could still change. Um, and again, time will tell. And a lot of things are going to be changing throughout the day as well. So severe weather threat is still not over with, it, with uh, today at all. I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're just going to be watching this. This is the, really the main storm of the day. I know a lot of people stream weather events when they're very high end, and that's just, to me, that's just very, 
I, I just don't like that idea. I, I, I want to include everybody in this, if that makes any sense. You know, I, I want to make sure everybody, no matter what, uh, has, you know, ha ha has the, you know, information out there. No matter if it's a 2%, 5%, we all need to be weather aware. And we'll take some look at these damaging, the, uh, the, looks like there's a lot of, uh, thunderstorm wind gust, 52 mile an hour winds measured, uh, on today's, uh, on this, this morning MCS that came through earlier today, 47 mile an hour winds, 60 mile an hour winds measured north of, D uh, Dothan. Wind damage being reported as well, 43 uh, miles per hour. So there is some damage here just to the north of Dothan. If anyone has any damage pictures, make sure to, uh, Go send them in as well. Just uh, tweet me on Twitter uh, using at uh, Norman underscore WX. And I'll definitely include that in the live stream. And of course, we're going to be on Twitter monitoring this. So we're going to be monitoring uh, we're going to be monitoring that supercell because it is very important. Let me let me find any reports. Let's take a look here. I'm seeing if find, trying to find any damaging wind. Damaging wind or anything here. And it looks like we don't have anything just yet, which is good news. Let's take a look here. Trying to clear some of these tabs out of the way. Uh, let's take let's take a look here. All right, let's take a look on satellite down here at this low pressure system now forming off, uh, and it looks like uh, you see this low pressure spinning right here, just to the just right over. Hold on, let, me, let me find it. Let me find it. Just right over there. There we go. Just right there. To the uh, right in the center of the screen see that's counterclockwise spin on that low just going to the north and this is going to bring really heavy rain and uh, heavy thunderstorms and potentially that tornado threat that is highlighted by the storm prediction center um, small two percent uh, but still enough to uh, potentially have that risk out there nonetheless so again still showing that surface load, and you can see this thunderstorms, top of those anvils, or the top of the anvil from those thunderstorms push up to the north. So that's going to be something to watch out for. That's going to be something to monitor as the day goes on. Seeing if there's any of these storms developing, you can see it's right along this like feeder band almost, like you do with hurricanes. You'll have these like feeder bands out ahead of the main low, and they'll just form off of this and just spiral around. And it kind of looks like what we have going on. You could really see these storms just go up and see these uh, cumulus uh, fields right along that feeder band. So that's going to be something to watch out for today. We'll go up to the north here. And you could really see, look at the clearing out here in New Hampshire and up to the north. A lot of cloud breaks and that's obviously sun. Especially during this time, uh, it just goes to show that, um, you know, we we have a lot of destabilization going on in the atmosphere. So, uh, very good sign if you, uh, you know, if, if from a storm chaser, if you see 
completely sunny skies or mostly uh, mostly sunny skies, really good sign. Um, but that is something to watch out for. You can see um, instability is starting to rise. Uh, the mesoanalysis also shows that too. But even in the satellite data, we can also observe that instability is starting to uptrend. Instability is starting to get uh, pulled up to the north. So again, very interesting uh, thing to observe through satellite. So back to radar here, we are uh, still watching this severe thunderstorm uh, in central Maine, just to the west of 95 along Sherman, just to the west of Sherman and Stacyville. Uh, severe thunderstorm warning is still effective with the supercell. Uh, and it looks like this low level circulation is starting to really not become as well organized as what we had earlier. I'm going to play a loop here. And it just doesn't really look that well established compared to earlier today. A couple of minutes ago, after that cell merger, it looked like a really unfavorable cell merger, actually. But still, it's still present, though. However, uh, there, there's your, uh, there's your outbound, your darker green, almost red, is going. There's your outbound winds showing it's going away from the radar. Velocity. Here's your velocity or your inbound winds on velocity going toward the radar, which is obviously creating that counterclockwise rotation, just right there, uh, just to the west of Mill and Mocket. Uh, they did have a severe thunderstorm now downgraded it to a special weather statement So the storm looks like it's really starting to weaken uh, as the best uh, Instabilities in the wind shear is not there yet again. That is back off to the south and west Again, that's gonna be something to watch out for see how far north that instability and moisture gets pulled north I wish I had better blackout curtains, but I do not. It's just really, really aggravating. That's a, it's okay. It's not that big of a deal. If that's the biggest problem to worry about all day, then I guess today ain't so bad. All right, so nothing really going on right now. So I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, get downstairs and uh, get me another drink. And uh, so I will uh, be just right back. Uh, I will not take that long, I promise. Uh, so uh, just give me a second and I'll be right back.
All right, we are back finally. I had to refill on the Dr. Pepper. Had to had to get a couple things and a couple things sorted out. But we are back finally. So currently watching uh, the Supercell. It's starting to really weaken and uh, not become as established as what it was. But however, still still ongoing. Uh, in central Maine, and again, if we take a look at velocity, it's not looking good as what we thought, uh, or at least it, uh, it's not looking good as what it was earlier, but still very weak but broad rotation uh, just to the west of Millinocket. Um, and you can see here on reflectivity, there's your supercell, there's your main body of the supercell, but you notice this little tiny appendage right here, like right, right through here, but you can see also this inflow notch trying to develop right here. There's your low, low, there's your circulation right there on the bottom right there. It'll be right near the base of the mesocyclone of the thunderstorm. Tornado watch still in effect, still uh, ongoing for portions of uh, uh, east of like south, far southeastern Quebec, Quebec into uh, uh, I think it's yeah New Brunswick. I totally. <laughs> I'm from the States. I, I don't know a whole lot about Canadian geography. But New Brunswick, uh, Eastern New Brunswick, Fed, uh, Fredericton, uh, Heartland, uh, you are in the tornado watch in Canada. So, Supercell Thunderstorms should be forming here within the next several hours. But we want to be here, be early, cover these morning storms, cover the early afternoon storms, be and be ready for when, uh, if anything goes up too early. However, a lot of thunderstorms developing down here along the cold front uh, down here in, in New York State and also in Pennsylvania. As we do have a severe thunderstorm warning already just to the north of Harrisburg. Severe thunderstorm warning uh, including I-81 just to the northeast of Harrisburg. Dolphin, uh, Halifax. Um, this severe thunderstorm warning is going to be um, expired until 3.45 p.m. Eastern. And uh, this is going to be worn for 60 mile an hour and uh, penny size hail. And of course, tornado threat should be very limited to n uh, no tornado threat down here in New York State, Pennsylvania, Maryland. Um, but however, you're still going to have a very large hail and damaging wind threat um, as the day goes on. And we'll go look at mesoanalysis once again. Um, but you can start to see there's that cumulus field uh, way back in here in Maine and clear up into. Uh, near Quebec and Vermont and New Hampshire. Very large CU field out here as we just observed on satellite. Uh, and you can see these storms and these towers already just going up like crazy uh, down here in Maine. And they, these these are going to be your potential severe weather producers, especially these southern ones as your better thermodynamics are way further south. And SJ, welcome to the stream, and how are you? Thank you for uh, coming onto the stream. You can see these these updrafts are really taking shape here as we go to the enhanced echo tops. Um, and if we just play a loop here real quick, and you can see these thunderstorms all just exploding at once. It's very very fun to watch that unfold. My opinion, always always fun to watch storms go up on radar on the first thing. The first thing of a severe weather day is just watching towers go up. It's just an absolutely great thing to see. Just very fascinating. Storms really taking shape here northwest of this once was dominant supercell uh, near Millisaka. Very, very strong updraft. Probably noted by ZDR. And you can see, look at all these updrafts starting to form here on, Z on ZDR. There's there's all your uh, very uh, strong uh, areas of uh, strong areas of the updraft already starting to go up like crazy. And if we even just play this back. Look at all these storms starting to develop. And you can see a lot of the... Yeah, Maine is really getting all the action today. Absolutely. And once this, this supercell, this was looking really good. This was severe warned earlier. Tornado possible tag was on it. But it just doesn't look that good anymore. And the reason is because of instability problems uh, that far northeast. And we'll go take a look at the... Uh, go take a look at the hourly mesoscale analysis here on the SPC's website just to show you how what are the ingredients in the atmosphere like for today 
So if we go over to Mesoanalysis, uh, here's your thermodynamics. Here's your mixed layer cape. And as you can see, here's that 500 mixed layer cape line right here. Um, and this soup, and there's there's your storm way off on that, just to the right of that line, and it's going into less than 500 mixed layer capes. So thermodynamics is not very favorable in eastern Maine. However, you're getting a thousand to 1500 out here in the southwest portions. Uh, very very good uh, for severe weather. You're getting around 100 now, zero to zero to one SRH. So your shear is starting to strengthen. And of course, your parameters are going to strengthen strengthen throughout the day. And of course, it looks like your storms within the next two hours are going to form in Quebec as you already have a tornado watch in place in Quebec and New Brunswick. So definitely, it's definitely just now a waiting game at this point. We'll take a look at the hodograph map here as storms go on. But you can see very favorable uh, tornado-like hodograph. Uh, very short, but it's still very curved at the 0 to 1 kilometer layer. However, further west you go towards the cold front, uh, it gets a little bit more linear. You can see the uh, hodographs further close to Quebec are very straight, uh, indicating that a QLCS tornado could happen as well. Um, but again, it's not very curved it's at the lower levels um, further west you go, but st it's still a lot enough shear to potentially get it done in the in a uh, QLCS line. But your tor best tornado threat for today is definitely going to be on the... Uh, out ahead with these uh, semi-discrete supercells in Maine. Or if any cell can remain at least isolated, it has the best shot of producing a tornado today. So let's go back to radar. See what this, see how these storms are doing. And man, these storms are absolutely blowing up. Storms are really getting its act together. And if we look... So the severe thunderstorm... So the, yeah, the tornado watch... The tornado watch is in Canada. Canada decided to, to drop a tornado watch for uh, east of New Brunswick and also in Quebec. Yeah, so, but they're, what's really weird is their tornado watches ex expire uh, way later in the day than compared to our watches. But needless to say, parameters are still there for uh, supercells and tornadoes, and also just all hazards are definitely possible on the table, or at least possible and are on the table. So, severe thunderstorm watches, though, get extended all of the way up north into New Brunswick, uh, north of Edmonston, uh, Campbellton. Ethan, what's up, man? Good to see you. Good to see you on the stream, man. Always, always happy to see you. Yeah, so, radar scope, the great thing about radar scope is if you get the tier two subscription, I promise I'm not, I'm not trying to promote them or anything. Uh, but their their tier their tier two product, if you if you uh, pay a subscription for it, uh, you can get access to the SPC watches. Uh, you can also get uh, also the Canadian watches and warnings, and also Australia watches and warnings, which is really crazy too to think about. But regardless, uh, it, it, I would say as long as you're dedicated to severe weather. Like if you're a chaser like I am, or just a really big enthusiast or meteorology student, I would definitely re highly recommend it. it it's just such a really good product. Uh, severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, storms are really starting to get their act together in this really big line along the cold front. Uh, just to just near Harrisburg, hail damaging winds is still going to be the main threat, uh, and, and that's that's going to be mostly the threat. Although your tornado threat again, best tornado threat today is going to be up here. In Quebec, uh, Western Maine, Northern New Hampshire. That's going to be your best bet for a tornado today. Along with the sneaky tornado setups, or sneaky tornado setup down here in the Florida Panhandle, uh, southern, far southern Alabama, and the far corner of southwest Georgia could still get a tornado or two. As a slow pressure system starting to come onshore, and you could really see the slow pressure system. Uh, on satellite and we'll actually transition back to satellite because i i absolutely love satellite it's one of my favorite uh favorite things to use especially when you're uh analyzing severe weather and there's your low pressure system right there coming on shore uh there's your feeder band your feeder band which you typically see with any tropical remnant or any hurricane to get these storms along your feeder bands out ahead of the eye or the center of the low pressure system and it looks like what we have that's what we, 
that's what it looks like we have going on here. So you can see top of these anvils, these thunderstorms are going absolutely crazy uh, just south of Mobile uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. And you can see this uh, CU field uh, streaming into the, the south side of that band. So potential ongoing thunderstorm development is going to happen further south down that line. So I, I think actually that invest is, this is the invest, I think. Actually, um, it, this could definitely produce tornadoes. I mean, a lot of these hurricane setups, like these two percent that happen with these uh, these tropical systems or these remnants or these invests, like they really they're really sneaky. You can see this really big linear MCS, um, this line complex coming through. Special marine warnings uh, already in place ahead of this feeder band. You can even see the feeder band. Uh, so there's your low pressures of what you've seen on satellite and we'll go ahead and go back to the radar. There's your low pressure system. There's your feeder band right here. So there's going to be more thunderstorms developing throughout the day in this region down south. And that's really going to be interesting. And again, we're going to have to watch out for the, for any, uh, QLCS, uh, embedded, uh, circulations. We're going to watch out for those embedded storm or circulations, or we're going to, have to watch out for any tornado threat that happens with that as well. Morning MCS still still chugging along, still going through uh, Georgia, southern Georgia. But uh, earlier we had a lot of severe thunderstorm warnings on that line, but so far it has uh, it has weakened sig very significantly. So that is good news. Again, the only severe thunderstorm warning we have in the U.S. is down here near Harrisburg. I expect a lot more severe thunderstorm warnings as the day goes on today. Um, maybe a tornado warning or two. Maybe even a tornado actually gets confirmed today. But this is the, this is the danger zone. This is this appears the real, real danger zone. This this area right here. Watching, uh, watching this area along the CU field really start to develop. Um, into thunderstorm, into thunderstorms, I should say. Let us go back to, let's go back to satellite here, and we'll try to bring up satellite here. Let's let's go back to satellite. Let's take a view of satellite up here in the northeast. So there's a live view of the uh, current satellite imagery uh, in the northeast, and you can see. Look at the sun out here. Sun is absolutely beating down, uh, creating. Uh, creating more instability out here in the northeast you can already see these thunderstorms already developing in maine uh, and look at the cu field this cumulus field all of these storms right here back in new hampshire southwest maine and also clear up north into quebec these are going to be the storms to really watch out for uh for the the greatest amount of severe weather today uh all hazards again are possible uh extending down and clear into new york um the, that's where your best tornado threat is highlighted by the storm prediction center uh we'll go take a look back on radar the two percent that we have out the five and the two and you can see this this five percent here in northwestern maine highlighted by the the brown uh line and also the uh two percent line right here highlighted by the dark green line uh so this this two percent tornado risk extends all the way down into the northwest corner of massachusetts uh, down towards Albany, New York. So you hypothetically could get a tornado down here. Although ingredients favor more of a robust uh, tornado threat up here. While it's a little bit still marginal, but it's still a lot better compared to down south. Again, this supercell was really starting to uh, weaken and it just not take shape. Earlier had a tornado possible tag on it. Doesn't really look good anymore. ZDR on it is absolutely just atrocious. Not 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 that good. ZDR, you can even see where the main updraft would be at. And you can see these green blue colors that I said earlier. Once you see these lighter blue greens, um it, that just means your updraft is really weakening. And you can even see that on the reflectivity. If we do a couple loops, you can really see how heavy the precip was and the lightning was and now it's just starting to weaken so and that is in large part due to the instability not being that far east but 
man, we could really see these thunderstorms and showers develop, excuse me, develop down to the uh, southwest portions of Maine. And also start to see a couple storms form up here in Quebec, near the Quebec, Vermont, New Hampshire border. We'll go take a lie, or we'll take a uh, look at the ZDR on it. It looks like we have li li these little small storms are starting to get these really good signatures of ZDR. So these updrafts are strengthening, and it looks like uh, they will be continuing to go on uh, to the northeast. So that's the, that's going to be the main threat today. That's going to be the main danger zone. Tornado watch is in effect, again, for portions of eastern Quebec um, and also uh, western, or not western, uh, and also for uh, New Brunswick as well. Uh, portions of McAdam, Fredericton, uh, Woodstock, Stanley, you're in the tornado watch in Canada, New Brunswick. Uh, also St. George's, uh, clear in Montreal. Uh, Sherbrooke, you're in that tornado watch today as well in Canada. But in the U.S., it turns into a severe thunderstorm watch, clear from Maine all the way down to northern Virginia near Richmond. So a very large area of uh, potential severe weather today. New severe thunderstorm warning now with that main line near Harrisburg. Uh, looks like a new one. Wow. New thunderstorm developing just to the south of the original Severe thunderstorm warning. We'll take a look at ZDR real quick. And it looks like this is a little bit of a weaker ZDR presentation, but still enough to sustain um, sustain that updraft. Once you get to like the yellow the yellow collars, it's kind of iffy and it's it's still an okay signature, but just still not enough to where it's explosive. Um, severe thunderstorm warning for downtown Harrisburg along uh, Interstate 81. Uh, Let's go look at the severe thunderstorm warning. 60 mile an hour winds and penny size hail. No tornado possible. Um, I do not expect any. I could be absolutely wrong because um, weather does crazy things sometimes. But, however, tornado threat today should be very minimal, minimal the further south you go here. Oh, yeah, Lucas, absolutely. That, ca that cannon is absolutely awesome, man. A lot of, also, a lot of uh, special weather statements down here, down to the south. Flash flood warning uh, in North Carolina uh, for northern Ash County until 9 p.m. tonight. And I think this this target down here, along with this invest, the surface low, is a really sneaky. This is going to be sneaky. I think this is going to be the sneaky tornado target today, of, uh, in my personal opinion. And you can see these little kinks in the line, these are, these areas of rotation already. And it's a little bit out ahead of the radar, but you can still see the rotation aloft along the kinks of that line. So don't be don't be uh, surprised if you see tornado warnings in this two percent. It's absolutely possible that this that could happen. And actually, while I'm thinking about it, let's go take a look at meso analysis and go down south into Florida and take a look at this environment that this is heading into. Let's pull up meso analysis here real quick and there we are. So instability values already nearly exceeding a thousand. Let's go take a look. Mixed layer cape approaching five hundred in some areas, but as that line comes on shore, looks like we're getting uh higher values. Uh, to a thousand range, roughly. It looks like it, for some reason it just falls out, which is really, really odd. That could be because of substance as well. Oh, so that's a different invest. I'll have to look at the. Uh, I'll have to look at that actually, and I'll, I'll. I promise I will pull that up here shortly. You can see super cell composite's not really that high, but, however. Uh, let's take a look at this wind shear. Wind shear seems to still be very weak, but let me uh, let me go back to the radar and let's pull some live photographs. I'm gonna use a website that I absolutely love. Down here, and go to Elgin Air Force Base. Let me pull up this 
uh, live sounding here. This usually takes some time to load. I think it wouldn't be a, actually. Let me wait and pull this because it it's going to be a little bit late. It's just I'd rather wait till later till it gets closer. Um. Okay. All right. So let's go back. Let's go back to the radar. Oh, looks like we're already at the radar. All right. So yeah, I definitely think this down here though could still be the sneaky play for today. We can already see these little kinks starting to form in this little Boeing segment. That's something we're really going to have to watch out for. Again, we'll go take a live look back up here to the north. Watching very explosive thunderstorm development down here in the New Hampshire uh, main border. We'll go take a look at ZDR, see how these updrafts are handling. Very explosive updrafts. It's just this one near Gorham, uh, Betnal. Uh, Rumford area is getting really strong updrafts starting to go up here along the border. So expect these to become uh, to become very dominant uh, thunderstorms, especially given the thermodynamic profile down here uh, compared to up north. We're going to have a lot better sustaining thunderstorms down south. Again, thunderstorms starting to develop down here to the south and also behind along the cold front as well expect more again with these cold fronts expect more of a linear mode usually there's a lot a lot of forcing that just goes up and you can even see that uh panning out here along the uh excuse me along the uh along here and you can even see that cold front way back here and these warm see these warm sector uh storms already going off Again, there's no cap in there. There's no surface layer. Um, there's no stable layer aloft. So you're, all these storms are just going to be exploding at once. Severe thunderstorm warning still ongoing. Getting some likely sub-severe storms in around downtown Harrisburg. So, again, these are mostly just worn for hail and wind. But, however... Uh, However, they're still they're still very important to watch out for. Again, watching this storm looks like could have a developing supercell here. And this has this little kidney bean shape to it. There's a little tiny little appendage are starting to dig down right there. So it could have a developing supercell here. Um, just to the uh, just to the northwest and literally in the middle of nowhere. Blue to the just to the northwest of uh, Millnocket. That's something we're gonna have to watch too. With our very close look, lightning looks like still very strong updraft. There's your updraft, very strong updraft. There's some lightning that's starting to already go down to the ground. We're also going to be looking for live reports as well. Uh, let me actually, here, let's put the thunderstorm outlook for Canada. Take a look here. Let me see here. Trying to find it here. I can't find it. 
Okay, let me try to find it here, and I can't. I can't find it. Oh wow. Okay, so apparently, hold on a second. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm sorry if I'm like being quiet here, but very large hail today from clear in France. Surprisingly, out of all places. France getting some very, very large hail today. And it looks like as well. That's super cell in France. See that wall cloud, see that rain free base. There's the pre slip core way back there. Very, very nice super cell in France today. Very, very nice. Very, very, very nice. So not only the U.S. getting some severe weather, also France getting in on the action for some severe weather. Again, I don't know if we have a radar that's that close to France, because considering radar scope does not have any. Yeah, I, I don't think we can view in France, unfortunately, but that's okay. We're still going to be keeping live reports and updates coming from there as well. Again, severe thunderstorms are going ongoing currently. Only severe thunderstorm warnings currently going uh, near Harrisburg, uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, large hail damaging winds already ongoing. And if you have any reports, uh, feel free to tag me on Twitter using uh, at Norm, Norman underscore WX. And I'll be glad to share them on the live stream. Really, really looking at this supercell. Uh, potentially developing supercell. It's really hard to tell at this very second. But it does have a very suspicious look. And again, we are a little bit far from the radar. So we're going to have to wait until it comes closer to the radar. But let's check in on this stuff down south. Man, look at that squall line. That's really intense. Probably will get severe thunderstorm warned. Potentially a couple tornado warnings down here. I definitely think tornado, a QLCS tornado threat's probably going to happen. And this thing is just pumping out lightning like crazy. Uh, special marine warnings are already going on with this. If I can click on it, I don't know why it's not letting me click. There it is. It is uh, again. It is warned for water spouts. Water spouts and 34 knot, uh, uh, 34 knot winds. So again, water spouts uh, could still be a, a threat. And if there's a threat for water spouts, there could definitely be still a threat for tornadoes. Uh, as well once it goes into shore it's a very very strong QLCS line and again we're gonna be looking at reports pictures um, let me Let me see here. And hey, Ethan, by the way, we may have a tornado set up. If you're still watching, we may have a tornado set up here on Wednesday. It looks very linear, but the tornado, for tor in terms of tornadoes, it does look pretty good. Let's see here. Looking for any reports online, any pictures. Do not see any at the very moment. So, but still watching this line come through. Barry to go into the Florida Panhandle. And I, I would expect they would put out a severe thunderstorm watch with this at bare minimum, I would think. Especially if that's strong of a line. 
comes through. Watching these little kinks on the line. If you don't know what kinks I'm talking about, you see this little kink right here. All this bows out, and there's just like this kink right here, like right in here. This could be, these are the kinks we're talking about. You could get some warm inflow that usually streams into these kinks, and you have this rush of cold air that comes out through and punches out. You usually get an uh, area of rotation usually right in there. And again, we do see that area of weak rotation, but some stronger rotation down to the south. Could have an ongoing brief water spout, actually, with that as well. And it's right on the edge of that little kink. And warm inflow usually surges in right here in these kinks, and they can usually create some spin with that. MCD just got issued. So it looks like they will not issue a watch with that at all. But still could get some severe storms, water spouts, brief tornadoes, still all possible. Yeah, still all possible with that. So, again, we will continue to monitor, this, monitor the situation. And we'll see. Let's take a look on how these storms are doing. Storms are still trying to rapidly strengthen here in Maine. Looks like a lot of storms are going up at once. A lot more than anticipated. Let's see if this is developing super sun. It's hard to tell, but it looks like we may have some broad rotation. There's your outbound winds, these darker greens, but these lighter greens are going to be your inbound wind signaling that it's going toward the radar. So in between, again, there's your center of rotation right there. There. I'm joking. I, I messed that up. I don't, it's hard for me to, to draw with a mouse. I'm usually just writing stuff down all the time. There's your center of circulation. So we'll be we'll be watching that, seeing if these storms develop. Uh, so how's uh is Ethan? Do you know if David's going to be streaming today by any chance? Not sure if he is. I I tried to text him a couple times and. Just not sure yet if he's going to be streaming or not. He's been, he's been out for a while. I, I, I mean, I don't know if he's been busy or... I'm not quite sure. All right. Let's go up and tilt with this. This one looks really interesting. And it's just such a really bad radar hole. Good Lord hate that especially about the northeast about these radar holes we'll see if we can get any tornadoes right with this i oh shoot eh, let's go to this one there we go we could really see that tight area rotation just off the uh panama just off of panama city beach be, looks like it's going to be heading north, I would assume. i to take a wild guess. Yeah, it's heading directly north. Moving very slowly. So, heading towards uh, Santa, Santa Rosa Beach, Seaside. This is going to be the area to really watch out for. See if they'll go tornado warned. If that still remains uh, intact. Oh, David's not streaming today? Oh, okay. Alright, looks like new severe thunderstorm warning now. Just in effect for portions of uh, southwest of uh, Macon, Georgia. Uh, se severe thunderstorm uh, looks to be... Uh, severe thunderstorm warning for uh, Tombs County in southeastern Georgia. 60 mile hour winds and quarter sized hail. No tornado possible tag. Um, so if you're if you're near the locations of uh, Santa Claus, Georgia, uh, Collins, Lyons, uh, Reedsville, uh, please make sure to go inside, seek shelter. 
Uh, do not want to be standing outside if there's a lot of lightning uh, and some hail and damaging winds. Make sure to grab everything inside. Put it inside if it's uh, if it's you know especially like toys or uh, anything that's loose uh, that could easily uh, fall off or go flying. Uh, please make sure to go take everything inside. Severe thunderstorm warning now in effect uh, just west of Washington D.C. or just west of Baltimore and just to the northwest of Washington D.C. Uh, looks like this thunderstorm is severe thunderstorm warned. Uh, let's take a look here. 60 mile an hour winds and quarter sized hail. Uh, just gonna be passing just to the south of Frederick on uh, 270. Passing also on I-70 near Mount Airy, uh, New Market, uh, and Urbana, Bartonsville. So if you're anywhere in that area, same thing. Make sure to grab everything that's uh, outside, especially if it's like if it's loose that could fly easy or uh, get thrown away or thrown uh, from these uh, damaging winds. Make sure to bring them inside so they will not be used as like flying debris, for example. Oh, he's been taking. Okay, so he's been taking off. Okay, that that makes sense. He's been streaming real, really a lot. I I totally get that. Get yeah, severe thunderstorm warning. Looks like I have a new severe thunderstorm warning near Harrisburg. Harrisburg's been getting pounded, man. Harrisburg has been getting the brunt of it today. Multiple severe thunderstorm warnings today near Harrisburg. And this severe thunderstorm warning is going to be effective till 4:15 p.m. Uh, 60 minor winds, penny sized hail, no tornado threat. Um, no tour possible, which is really good. And it looks like we have a, a thunderstorm wind damage report clear up in northern PA. Looks like it's from this complex of thunderstorms. So not a severe thunderstorm warning, but still uh, has produced damage. So make sure uh, to be weather aware if you live here. If you live near Port Dickinson, Johnson City, New York, uh, this has went and gone produced damage. Damage is unknown because that, that is a report, but nothing, no details on that. But still, uh, very important to watch that. Again, tornado watch uh, is still in effect for uh, portions of eastern Quebec, uh, east of Montreal, uh, south of Quebec itself. And tornado watch is in effect uh, for... Uh, southern New Brunswick near the main border, uh, Centerville, uh, Hart Heartland, Stanley, uh, New Brunswick. Please make sure to heed warnings later on today as we already have a couple severe thunderstorm warnings here in New Brunswick. And we'll go on velocity here. Nothing really to note about rotation, um, but still severe thunderstorms are going to be pushing through this area in New Brunswick onto the coast. So if you're near, near uh, Miramichi, uh, please, uh, again, make sure to heed the warnings. Make sure to take proper safety precautions uh, during this time as well. Again, lots, watching a lot of thunderstorm development here in Maine. We'll watch to see if it, any of these will go... Yeah, securing outdoor items is certainly a good advice. We should have done that around here in northern Indiana yesterday. I'm sure moved in several yards. And high winds during morning storm. Yeah, it absolutely is. I during the 2012 derates over here, it was we didn't do that, and we had everything slung around. It was just a pain in the rear end to clean everything up. So bringing bringing things inside, uh, like securing out, you know, sec securing outdoor items. Especially that are not like welded down or uh, uh, securely fastened, please bring them inside because that could just go in through your window or that could just go into your neighbor's yard and that could just create big problems that you don't want to deal with. Yeah, nothing looks very super cellular yet, um, as what we had earlier this morning. But again, a lot could change. Looks like a lot of severe thunderstorm warnings are starting to ramp up here in the northeast. Severe thunderstorm watch. Uh, still monitoring, uh, and clear from Maine all the way down to Northern Virginia, tornado watches in Eastern Quebec, Southeastern New Brunswick. And again, here's that line coming through and you can really start to see the kinks in this line now. 
So I'm really wondering if this is going to become a sneaky tornado threat, as I said, for the past couple minutes. And you're starting to really see these little kinks along the leaning edge of this line. Especially this more broader rotation back here on this. So that's going to be a very, very interesting thing to watch out for as this thing comes on shore. Again, no, no severe weather reports, no nothing crazy at this time. So, we're going to be monitoring on Twitter, monitoring all social media platforms to uh, make sure we have some accurate reports. Let's see here. Let's see if we have any reports. And yesterday, apparently Ontario had a derecho uh, yesterday evening. We'll go on Twitter here and look at this damage video. Very, very, very strong damaging winds. That's really, really concerning type damage especially with the derecho like that derechos you can easily have 80 90 100 mile an hour winds in uh we've seen with the iowa derecho last year caused really big problems throughout the entire state look trees down it's like part a house uh house's roof looks like got peeled a little bit barns damaged some of the silos are down one of them's completely torn down very very bad damage coming from this derecho from yesterday Again, watching this main line of severe thunderstorms coming onto the Gulf, or from the Gulf, and coming onto the shore. Let's see here. Yeah, there was a derecho in Ontario. That's that, I did not know about that until recently. Which is absolutely crazy to think about. No reports. Not a whole lot of reports. No pictures of the shelf cloud either. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and... See if we can find any pictures from the shelf cloud here on Twitter. Nothing yet. Which is really surprising. Usually Twitter's Especially in Florida, usually blows up pretty fast. With uh, blows up with pictures and all kinds of reports. But these little areas of rotation have me a little bit concerned. Really do. Special marine warning already getting issued for Pensacola, the beaches, uh, moving north at 35 knots. Water spouts are probably going to uh, definitely a possibility here. We could have some. Uh, Water spouts is associated with this MCS or this QLCS line, which is really going to be, uh, if it comes on shore, that's going to be big problems too. And, and usually, water spouts can go on shore and cause damage, just like a, even a supercellular tornado. Again, nothing, nothing, a whole, not a whole lot's going on right now. It's been a kind of slow day, but I expect that to ramp up here uh, in the next several hours, especially around four or five, around peak time. NWS uh, employee reports eight or almost an inch of hail in Maryland. Wow. Take a look at this. So. 
So yes, 0.88 inches near Point of Rocks in Maryland. Is that severe thunderstorm, warm storm? It's near uh, 270, just south of Frederick. So we do have some hail with this. So make sure to go indoors. Uh, and the good saying goes, if there's, if you, uh, when thunder roars, go indoors. And that's absolutely true. So make sure to go inside. There's already reports of almost one inch hail with this thunderstorm too. We'll go look at a product we call digit digitally vertical. Uh, I can't say that. <laughs> Digital vertically integrated liquid. There we go. And this pretty much just shows how heavy the precip is uh, in this thunderstorm. And we can see uh, typically these lower colors, these blues or dark blues, and these greens, these heavier colors like these reds, uh, magenta, whites, pinks, those are really going to be the heavy uh, colors and the, uh, the heavy colors we have to watch out for. And you can see. This is definitely a hail core right here. Definitely can see it on the on this product, uh, and again that lines up perfectly with that hail report that uh, Ethan just mentioned in chat. And it looks like we have some, yeah. So thunderstorm wind damage uh, associated also with this line near uh, Harrisburg as well. So damage has been reported. This uh, severe thunderstorm warning. This little tiny Boeing complex. Uh, just to the east of Harrisburg. So if you're near uh, Jonestown, Ono, Anvil, uh, please make sure to seek uh, proper shelter. Go inside uh, your homes. Go inside of a store. Go inside of a gas station. Just get inside. Um, make sure to sec secure loose things around the house. Um, if you have anything outside, you do not want that to be a flying projectile or land up somewhere that in your neighbor's yard say for example severe thunderstorm warning now getting issued and it's really starting to ramp up just right on top of the uh binghamton new york radar site uh this is just gonna be just north of Bim uh big ham or i can't say that binghamton thank you that's yeah, a binghamton i think yeah so just gonna be to the north of that along uh interstate uh or highway 17 interstate 81 heading to the northeast so again Green, uh, Green, New York. If you're between Port Dickinson and Green, especially on uh, Interstate 81, Highway 79, if you especially live out there, uh, please make sure to uh, go indoors. Uh, severe thunderstorm warning is going to be ex expiring until 4:15 p.m. Central. Uh, 60 mile an hour winds and hail is expected. So it looks like the severe weather is starting to really ramp up here in the Northeast and the Mid Atlantic, big time. We're really starting to see some thunderstorm activity develop here in the uh, in the south of Maine as well. No rotation yet on any of these as well, so they're going to take a little. I bet they'll take a little while to develop into any supercellular characteristics. Again, there's there's a little, there was that one storm we were trying to watch and maybe could see some brief rotation right here. But it's a little bit hard to just to tell right this second, so we're gonna wait to really say if that's a uh, super cell or not. Down south again, this is uh, another target we're gonna be watching for for any brief tornadoes. And it does look like this line is still gonna go on, and man, look at these little uh, embedded areas of rotation. Let me go to the radar here and. KTLH, and you can see these areas of rotation. Boom, boom, boom. Just along these, along this leaning edge. So, could have a possible tornado, a very brief tornado threat down here with this line. Again, severe thunderstorm warning. A lot of these uh, sub-severe storms uh, just to the south of Macon, Georgia. It's going to produce some little bit of gusty winds and small hail. A lot of special weather statements near Asheville, North Carolina. Again, same same ordeal. Going to get a lot of a lot of uh, gusty winds and small hail. Nothing too serious. Um, yeah, we're going to be we're going to be monitoring these storms today, and we're going to be 
we're really going to be watching and seeing how this evolves as the night goes on. So again, if you're new to the stream, my name is Norman Smith. I am a uh, storm chaser, chase tornadoes uh, for the past two years. I'm also currently a meteorology student. Um, and again, if you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm glad to have you on board. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to uh, you know leave a like if you enjoyed the content. If you like my tornado videos or uh, like storm chasing at all, or like these live streams, these live coverages, um, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel. Um, we're really going to try and make this channel special. Uh, we're, I'm going, you know, I'm going to keep on uh, posting content as much as as much as you guys want me to. So, you guys have been absolutely killing it on the views and the likes and just the positive feedback in general. You guys have done fantastic on. So, thank you. Uh, and it really does mean a lot. And you guys are, you guys, you know, this is this channel is all. It's not just my channel. It's just our channel too. Um, you know. It, not only me, but you guys as well put in your part into this channel too to keep it growing and to make it, um, to make it you know successful in that way. And of course, I'm not a millionaire off of YouTube or anything, but you know, you guys have just you know, you guys have done really you know, you guys have just kept this channel alive, and you know, so thank you for that. And you know, again, I'm not going to stop doing what I love to do, and I, I'm just really happy I, I get to spread. Uh, you know, my passion and my love for severe weather, whether that be through, again, storm chasing or doing live coverages like this. I absolutely love it both. So, so yeah, uh, we're going to be still watching this line of this MCS uh, approaching the Florida Panhandle uh, later today. And again, could has a very high damaging wind risk. Could have a couple severe thunderstorm warnings come out of this. Uh, it looks like this thing is still rotating to some degree within these little kinks in the line. So let's take actually, I'm actually curious myself, let's go take a look at uh, mesoscale analysis here in the northeast. As storms are starting to fire, it's a really good time to look at mesoscale analysis and to look at, uh, and to look at the environment. So the, again, this is the current live uh, mesoanalysis view, um, and we are currently looking at uh, currently looking at live parameters. Here's your here's your mixed layer cape, your thermodynamics, your uh, or your instability in the atmosphere. And we're already approaching a thousand clear up into northern Maine. <coughs> Ethan, thank you for sharing, man. It, absolutely. I really do appreciate that. Yeah. Share the stream also with likes. The likes, subscribe, subscribe uh, does help too. Um, but also sharing does help a lot as well. So, Ethan, thank you, man. I absolutely appreciate all the love, man. And we need to meet up next time I come to Indiana. We got to meet up. It's got to happen. So, Rad, you could really see how uh, rapid this instability has gone north, and we can even take a look at the surface observations. 70 over 65. You're reaching almost high 60 dew points clear in Maine, which is absolutely crazy to think about. 75 over 61. Still getting decent dew points here in Quebec. 82 over 62. 82 over 64 on these metars. Um, still very good temperature uh, dew point spreads as well with this. Supercell composite, not a, I'm not a huge fan of this, but however, it is a good overall product to use. Again, we're getting high, higher supercell problems uh, in there as well. Bulk shear, lower in bulk shear, but until you get a little bit further north into central Maine, uh, then you really start to get better bulk shear to sustain those thunderstorms. Zero to one SRH, still getting around 100. Uh, almost getting 150 just to the southeast near the uh, coast. So still enough to get it done. Not not really high on parameters, but still there. Get around 100 to 150, depending on where you're at in Maryland. So on the zero to three kilometer helicity. So again, it's it's minimal, but it's still there. Again, we're still getting also some increase in vorticity and surface instability as well. So again. Seeing why these thunderstorms are now starting to more sustain themselves is because the thermodynamics are starting to become uh, a lot better 
than they were this morning. So currently watching uh, down down here in the uh, in southern Maine here. This is the main area we're really watching. It looks like we have a potential supercell developing near uh, Bingham, and again, very hard to tell because it is very very. It's very hard to tell considering that the radar, it's radar dead zone there, but. In terms of radar presentation and overall shape of it, it does look like a supercell. Just hard to tell at this very instant. But we'll keep an eye on that as well. Again, thunderstorms really starting to get well established. Uh, storms going into the tornado watch now. Here in Canada. And it looks like we cannot get anything. Here on radar, I cannot. My radar is not loading, which is not good. And it looks like we have a potential supercell uh, here in Quebec, uh, near a Ayers Cliff, uh, Stans Sandstead, uh, Quebec. Uh, looks like if we go to velocity, it looks like we do have a couple areas of rotation, uh, especially down here near Georgeville. This could be up here, could be clutter. Um, which does make sense. It could be side lobe contamination. Uh, it's just really hard to discern. But you can see the you can see this little kidney bean shape. There's your little kidney bean supercell, warm moist inflow getting surged into the supercell here by that. You can tell by that little inflow notch right there. And typically, right on that southern side is where your circulation is always going to set at. And if we look on velocity, there's your circulation right here, right over Georgeville. We're going to be watching that. Make sure if that goes tornado warned. Again, tornado watch still in effect uh, for Quebec. So we'll be, this is this is the prime area right now. So this is going to be, uh, yeah, it's supercell time. So we're going to, this is time to really crack down and to uh, watch these storms. And it looks like Vermont's radar may be down actually. Just not not good. All right, so we're gonna be watching. This is I think this is gonna be the storm to watch right here in Quebec. This may be the storm to watch as of right now. Again, this could possibly be another supercell, but it's hard to tell because the radar beam is really high up, and of course it's in the radar dead zone. But look at that little supercell shape to it that it's getting on. And again, there's your inflow notch starting to, to get into that supercell. So rotation should be near Bingham, uh, Bingham or uh, south of the Forks uh, in Minnesota, or not Minnesota, <laughs> and near Maine, rather. Severe thunderstorm warnings again. Uh, going on all the way from New York down clear into near Washington, D.C., which new severe thunderstorm warning now in effect near Washington, D.C., and we'll be taking a look at that. And it looks like severe thunderstorm warning with this. Looks like supercell. Looks like we have another potential supercell. This little, this little shape has this little appendage coming down. Warm inflow again. Going to be surging. Again, rotation should be pretty broad but right there and again if we look at velocity again very very weak as we do not have the great enough shear down here but it's still there to you know it's still there again severe thunderstorm warning uh just to the west of washington dc uh let me go ahead and let me go ahead and pull up the severe thunderstorm warning that for some reason will not cooperate I do not know why it does this. I, at the, the one problem I have with radar scope, 60 mile an hour winds and quarter size hail, no tornado possible, but supercell looks to be uh, just near Broadlands, uh, Cascade, Sterling, uh, Maryland, approaching near Washington, D.C., so it's going to be heading a little bit to the east. So it's going to be coming into the Washington, D.C. metro. David Schlotthauer, what is up, man? Good to see you. Always great to see you. Again, looking also 
at this linear complex now coming into the Florida Panhandle. And again, very, very, uh, looks like we don't have a lot of circulations is what we did earlier, which is a good sign. So it could be, uh, this still could produce a little bit of uh, quick brief spin ups along this MCS. But however, damaging winds is still the primary threat down here. Let's go back up north to this tornado watch in Canada. This is very interesting to uh, see unfold. Actually, got a new severe thunderstorm warning now in Maine. Uh, and this is just going to be to the north or just to the east of Bethel. Looking DMs. Okay. So severe thunderstorm warning now in, uh, in effect for near Bethel, uh, near Sumner, uh, in Maine. Quarter size hail, 60 mile an hour. Let's see, velocity, no no clear cut rotation on these, but it looks like these are starting to become, getting that little shape to them, that that uh, super cellular shape to them. So we'll see if they can uh, become very, uh, we'll see if they'll produce any tornado threat with them, but we will see. Okay. Again, watching the supercell uh, just near, actually went severe thunderstorm near Ayers Cliff, Hatley, um, Dixville, or Dixieville, Dixville, uh, Quebec. Uh, severe thunderstorm warning now in effect for it. Martinville, Compton, Quebec. Uh, you are in the severe thunderstorm warning with this supercell. That's going to be pushing th due east. So, uh, Tornado Watch is still in effect for east, uh, far southeastern Quebec, east of Montreal, uh, south of uh, Quebec itself, the city of Quebec. But, man, look at this large, severe thunderstorm watch. Clear from severe weather, clean from all the way from uh, Canada, all the way down here to northern uh, Virginia. Okay, let's see here. I'm trying to find a better radar, but it's just KCXX looks like it's down. Which is kind of upsetting, but still, center circulation with this supercell is going to be just located uh, just near Georgeville, just passed over Georgeville, moving very slowly, looks like. So there's your center of rotation right there. And that's going to be something we're really, really going to have to watch. Again, let's go up a little bit to the north here. These little complex of thunderstorms developed. They could definitely be severe uh, here momentarily. Um, as this one down to the south and southwest Maryland. Now, I didn't say Maryland. Maryland, Maine. Oh, gosh. I just can't speak at all today, guys. I just can't do it. Severe thunderstorm warning is in effect down here in Maine. But again, no tornado warnings. Uh, nothing too crazy. Again, looks like we have some more thunderstorm damage, uh, wind damage reports uh, coming out of west of Harrisburg, it looks like, near Carlisle. So, again, this severe thunderstorm warning that's pushed through to the east side of Harrisburg. This has gone on to produce damaging winds. Uh, thunderstorm wind damage has already been reported just to the west of Harrisburg. Again, 60 and penny size hail. That's the main threat with that. But again, this right here. This line complex is starting to push into the uh, starting to push into the Florida panhandle, looks like. Nothing on velocity that looks concerning. No kink in the line that looks 
really tornadic or anything like that. We're really going to watch this storm up here in Canada is really. Oh yeah, it's it's very hard. Like again, I'm mostly a guy that vi does videos, let alone actual like live coverages. So watching these storms here in Canada and Quebec, it looks like they may we may get a little bit of rotation here. It's hard to tell with these Canadian radars because of they're not high res, but definitely some rotation down here with that storm, along with potentially down here and also this supercell down here. Really going to be watching these uh, developing supercells here in Quebec. So I, um, I'm going downstairs, get something else to drink, get some water. My throat's starting to hurt because uh, I'm talking so much. I'm trying to get used to everything. So uh, we will uh, cut the stream, or we will not cut the stream. We will be right back with uh, uh, continuing live severe weather coverage.
All right, we are back on the live stream. Sorry about that. I had to get something trick. My throat was absolutely killing me. It's all good now. We're back. And again, currently watching these uh, developing supercells in Canada and Quebec along the uh, New Hampshire Quebec border. Again, we really have a pretty uh, substantial amount of rotation here with with this uh, the supercell down here uh, in Quebec, uh, just near just to the east of Georgia. There's our center of rotation. We're going to be watching as so we tracking to the east, and there's going to be something we're going to have to watch and monitor throughout this uh, situ throughout this situation here. Another supercell developing just behind it here. Uh, just north of Highgate Center, just along the uh, New Hampshire, again, just along the New Hampshire, or I should say Vermont border, I should say, uh, and Quebec border. And again, that's really looking like to be the highlight of today as of right now. Again, severe th thunderstorms already ongoing in southern Maine. Or, yeah, southern Maine, along with... Uh, this uh, separate complex, uh, Severe Thunderstorm Watch, is out and in effect for uh, central uh, central uh, New York State and is clear down into uh, northern Virginia. As we do have several severe thunderstorm warnings already in place, this severe thunderstorm warning just to the east of Harrisburg uh, already has produced damage near Carlisle. And Severe Thunderstorm Warning just got extended into Redding, uh, Redding Pennsylvania. Just to the south of I-70, I believe that's the interstate. Yeah, just to the south of I-70. Uh, oh, just to the south of I-78, my apologies. Uh, and just to the north of I-76. So, severe thunderstorm warning is still in effect until uh, 5 o'clock or five o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, 60 mile an hour winds and quarter or penny sized hail. This will be chugging along to the east. So, again, if you're just to the east, you're Newmanstown, Redding. Uh, Shillingston, uh, West Hamburg, uh, please make sure to go inside, make sure to seek proper shelter, uh, as this has already produced uh, wind damage uh, just to your west. Now, further down south, new severe thunderstorm warnings are in effect uh, just north of D.C. and just the west of Baltimore. i uh, already had a hail report today just to the south of Frederick of near almost an inch so, severe thunderstorm warning is in a place just to the west of Baltimore along I-70. Uh, 60 mile hour winds, quarter sized hail. Then we also have a uh, thunderstorm just to the southwest of that, which is warned for 60 mile hour winds just to the west of Washington, D.C. And again, let's go further south. Severe thunderstorm warning near, near Macon. Looks like a complex of sub-severe thunderstorms near Macon. We have a little severe storm down here just to the south of that as well. Uh, likely going to be damaging winds and small hail. This is a threat of 60 mile an hour winds and quarters. No tornado possible at all with any of these, which is a really good thing. And you can see this line, this uh, MCS or mesoscale convective system, is pushing through. Uh, starting to get onto the sh uh, shore. So that is something we're going to have to watch. And see, but this is the main threat right now. This is definitely the main threat as of right now. These supercells uh, just to the south uh, into uh, Sherbrooke or uh, just to the west of Montreal or to the east of Montreal. Again, we'll take a look at storm relative velocity. And you can see it looks like there's two supercells here. Looks like they're trying to merge into one. So you can see. Here's your, here's your one supercell, and there's your second right here. And, of course, warm inflow is going to be streaming into these storms uh, right here on these on the inflow notch. And that's where you get this uh, these areas of rotation at. So, you know, main rotation. Here, here's uh, circulation number one. Oh, uh, here's circulation number one. Circulation number two is down to the south. So this could definitely prompt tornado warnings, as this is in a tornado watch for... Uh, for uh, eastern Quebec or southeastern Quebec, and also Tornado Watch is currently ongoing uh, just to the uh, in far southwest of uh, New Brunswick and Fredericton, uh, McAdam, 
Centerville, Centerville, these are the areas that are in that tornado watch. So please stay weather aware today. Also, severe thunderstorm watch is in effect in Maine. Uh, a couple tornadoes are possible today as a, a 5% and a 2% extends, or 5% is in Maine, while 2% is all the way down to northwest side or northeast side of New York State. So again, we're really going to be uh, watching these storms here, especially uh, in Canada, as they already starting to get some pretty decent rotation. Here's that. Here's a couple just near uh, Compton. And there's some. There's some more rotation. Here's here's a big mesocyclone right here. There's that big mesocyclone. There's your second circulation down here. So we're really watching for uh, the potential for tornadoes, uh, especially here in Quebec. And it definitely is very possible that that could happen. But we, we will wait and see. And it looks like these are going to be the dominant storms right here. That looks will be the, the main ones today so far. And we'll go to the... Uh, we'll go look at satellite imagery let's go look at satellite so here's satellite imagery for uh quebec uh look at your ongoing storms here and on the bottom right side of the screen there's your storms in new hampshire and vermont and into maine look at these thunderstorm tops going into uh the very far eastern side of quebec and you can see those thunderstorm towers from that severe thunderstorm warning already blowing up just along the border, just north of the uh, Vermont uh, and Quebec border. Those storms are absolutely going crazy right now. So there, so there's your supercell that we're watching. Uh, and Because I, I, I'm mostly not a live streamer, and I, I, most of my views come from people watching over time. So. But man, look at the strong rotation near Compton. Starting to get a lot more visible rotation here. And it looks like this may become a uh, cell merger uh, over time. Looks like this has become the dominant supercell right here. Jaden, what's up, brother? Nice to see you, man. Very good to see you. So, yeah, looks like we have... I, I wish Canada needs to upgrade their radars. Tornado watch still in effect for the next six and a half hours. So we're going to be monitoring, uh, making sure any, uh, making sure any uh, storm reports. Let's see if there's any live storm reports right now. I don't think there is. So yeah, this looks to be like the main, the main. Uh, Storm that we're really keeping an eye on. This is probably the best looking storm we've had all day, to be honest. And this thing is really starting to wrap up. We'll take a live view here. You can see it's really becoming, looks like it's becoming a cell merger, looks like possibly. It's hard to tell. But, it's, yeah, it's really hard to tell with these Canadian radars. But my guess is, looks like there's two, where there's two areas of circulation, looks like they're starting to merge and become one dominant supercell, which usually 90 percent of the time happens raging weather thank you man i absolutely appreciate all the love and support again you guys are carrying this channel i mean it, this is our channel this is not my channel guys this is our channel so again thank you guys so much for the overwhelming support uh for the stream and you can see actually the southern the southern edge of rotation is starting to get choked off and again that is because it looks like the dominant supercell is becoming the northern storm here and you can see that little appendage starting to come down and starting to merge with the southern storm so it could have a very well a tornado warning here uh just to off to the east and also in the main so watch out over here uh in the next couple hours or so val racing hampton uh woolburn uh i'm sorry if i'm butchering this butchering these names jackman uh near the border so Again, severe thunderstorm warning as of now with these supercells coming through. Uh, possible tornado warnings will come here later. And again, we have a lot of damaging wind, thunderstorm wind gust reports. 
uh, near Binghamton. Uh, and also just a bunch of damage reports out of here. And again, a lot of people stream from the uh, for like the big days, but regardless, if it's a uh, lower end day or a higher end day, we're still going to stream. So we want to give everyone fair treatment. So again, here's a here's this line coming through again. Here's this line coming through again, uh, through the Florida Panhandle. So, I know a lot, again, a lot of people don't really stream on low end days, but, but, you know, even on these low end days, it's nice to give everyone fair live coverage just because, again, we've had days where I've had days where I've gotten tornadoes on low end days and it, it, it happens. Weather's crazy. So it's, I think it's, in my opinion, it's very it's only right to give everyone a, you know, that's right. It's a, you know, very, uh, I think it's just fair to give everyone, you know, coverage, even if it's, you know, we're, we're just not discriminating against these lower end events and not, you know, really caring about them, but we need to really care about every setup. Again, the supercell is really starting to take shape now. Very broad circulation, but looks like this, there's a little small area near Compton that's starting to really get its act together. Definitely could see a tornado warning here soon. But we're going to go uh, use two panels here for this since we're going to try to keep looking at uh, rotation and uh, velocity. Rotation and on the simulated reflectivity. So, again, tornado watch is still in effect. Uh, and again, looks like the supercell starting to get a lightning to it. So, really key indicator uh, when looking for uh, thunderstorm development or increasing thunderstorm development uh, or strengthening is to look out for lightning. If there's a lot of lightning around your updraft base, that's a very good sign that this uh, storm is starting to strengthen. And again, ZDR just even even really just I mean just uh, proves what I was saying earlier. The storm is still going on, still strengthening, going under a cell merger. So I think this is going to be the storm to watch out for. This is the best looking at supercell we've had all day, in my personal opinion. So. And again, it's just only a matter of time at this point to really see uh, if this storm does anything. Yeah, the the MCV day. Yeah, that was a that was a wild day, man. No tornado probs. It was outside of the two percent tornado risk, and then next thing you know, it produced a regional tornado outbreak in Indiana and Ohio. So I'm saying you always got to be ready, no matter what. And frankly, I mean, no one knows what's going. You know. As much as we know about weather as it is, there's still a lot of uncertainty with, uh, especially tornadoes and tornado genesis. Um, a lot to still be discovered scientifically about uh, severe weather. Again, severe thunderstorm warnings. Let's talk about these because we haven't been really talking about these or those a whole lot. So go back to the one panel here real quick. I think we'll use the two panels just for uh, mostly when we have a tornado warning or a supercell that looks really good. Um Again, severe thunderstorm warning heading towards near Baltimore, just south of I-70. Uh, so just near Germantown, Gaithersburg, uh, uh, Laytonsville, Brookville. Um, severe thunderstorm warning still going on. Uh, six man hours quarters. Then we have uh, near Leesburg, severe thunderstorm warning with these uh, cells just to the northwest of Washington, D.C., And it looks like we do have a new severe thunderstorm warning uh, just to the uh, west of Lynchburg near Farmville, Appomattox, near the Appomattox Courthouse. And it does look like it's a little tiny, weak supercell. Severe thunderstorm warning still in effect. Buckingham uh, along uh, Highway 60. 
Uh, severe thunderstorm warning still in effect. 60 mile an hour winds is the only threat uh, with this as well. So something to keep an eye on. Not Again, best tornado threat is going to have to be either north, near Maine, or Canada, or this little tiny sneaky target with the surface low coming on shore. And again, we really do not see a whole lot of, on velocity. And we could, I mean, maybe as this gets closer to the line, but again, as of right now, nothing noticeable as of right now. So we're going to go ahead and go back up north because this is going to be our main area to watch. Severe thunderstorm warning still in effect with this storm too. Again, we're seeing a lot of rotate strengthening and rotation here with this storm as well. And it looks like there's just two just two areas of circulation here. One near Martinville. We've got one up here near Eaton as well. And it looks like they're just trying to uh, do a cell merger. Um, but I don't know. It's just really weird to see this. Usually they just merge into one supercell. But it looks like they're just doing their own thing at this point. Textbook inflow notch into this thunderstorm. Just to the south of Martinville too. It's going to be heading off to the east. Maybe they'll still go tornado warned. Who knows at this point. I didn't know you ever taught CPR AED classes to nursing students. I never knew you did that, Ethan. Good for you, man. Good for you, bro. I'll say definitely, definitely all of you guys have definitely a big future. JJ, man, you got a big future ahead of you, man, too. Ethan. Ethan, you're really knowledgeable about severe weather. And it's like a lot of people that are interested about weather kind of have like the same same background. Just always, always loved it for some reason, but you never knew why. But you just kept, you know, you just always stick with it. Something's telling you, your gut feeling, something... You know your head's your voice in your head's telling you to stick uh, with it. So, and you just don't know why, but it, it's just the way it is. And again, we're watching the supercell here, just uh, near Cookshire, Eaton, uh, just in uh, southeastern Quebec. Again, this supercell is really starting to get its act together, and this could definitely go tornado warned here very shortly. And we will see if anything happens. Currently monitoring. I wish we had like a, a team, like uh, like a social media team for this channel. Maybe in the future, though. That's all highly possible. You never know. Let's see. Let's take a look on Twitter. Usually Twitter is very fast with getting reports out. I love using Twitter. Again, nothing, no reports coming on Twitter, which is a good sign. So here is the, uh, here's the Canadian version of the Storm Prediction Center. Here's what they have so far. So they have a, uh, what they call a high risk of severe weather, not the high risk that we have here in the States, but they do have a, uh, level three risk of severe weather. Uh, so... Here, so it's kind of weird. So, so they also have different regions. So labeling regions A and B, and here's all the risk: uh, some hail, uh, wind gusts up to 110 knots, 90 knots, and also there's the tornado icon. So, uh, we do have a risk for tornadoes. Uh, they're also noting a risk for tornadoes as well, which is why they have the tornado watch out in effect. So, best tornado probs are actually where that supercell is according to the environmental and climate change uh or the ECC uh so it's like the at the storm prediction center or the NWS SPC version of Canada <coughs> so we're watching this supercell very very closely and I say supercells very closely 
Again, very strong rotation on these. Probably very photogenic right now. Probably has a really nice wall cloud mesocyclone on them as well. But I have a feeling it's probably going to be the southern one that produces. It has the best chance of producing. Um, there's not really much. There's not a whole lot of precip that's uh, really invading its inflow notch. And looks like we have a new scan. And it looks like it may be trying to merge now, actually, but it's so hard to tell. But again, still uh, a super. This looks like two super cells still merge. And it looks like we may have a little another one down here. And in fact, we do. Here's another supercell developing just near Gore. Uh, Gore, Quebec. This is coming near Highway 55. Yeah, three hours. Almost going four right now. So severe thunderstorm warning still in effect. For this storm, we're still watching. Oh, my radar just kind of just like messed up right there, but that's okay. Still really watching out for any. See if there's actually a CC drop with this correlation coefficient drop. I doubt it. Yes, yeah, so there's no area of where a CC drop looks to be at, which is like a very good sign. But this supercell also back off to the west near Gore is something to watch out for. And it's probably say, it looks like this, this cell merger is starting to get underway. Another cell down here could go supercellular. Then we have a supercell near Richmond, Quebec, uh, just to the north. In between there is really something to watch out for. And again, severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, looks like a new one just got extended down here. These storms down here in Maine, to the southwest of Maine near Mount Vernon. Uh, let me see if there's any rotation on these. Not really. Very weak, little to no rotation on these. Uh, severe thunderstorm warning still in effect. 60 mile an hour winds, half dollar sized hail. So we're getting a lot bigger hail reports as the day goes on. More thermodynamic, uh, more and better thermodynamic profiles are uh, starting to become... Uh, able to or able to at least go more northward let's check on this line down south it looks like they have a couple prefrontal uh storms out ahead of this line but i think the main severe weather threat if any is going to be on this squall line and we're probably going to have a couple damaging wind reports out of that when that comes on shore no severe thunderstorm watches no um tornado warnings yet but that uh, or severe thunderstorm warnings, at least down here. Uh, no tornado warnings at all today, but our severe thunderstorm warnings have been going up today. Quite bigly, or at least quite, uh, quite a lot. So yeah, this is what we're really going to have to watch out for. Oh, shoot, did not mean to do that. Wrong product. Again, this is these are gonna be the real one real big problem makers down here as well oh it's very important especially when you stream just realizing about stretching stretching is really important I also have bad back problems and all that stuff So, it looks like this is becoming the dominant supercell. Uh, and it looks really, it's starting to get really organized. There's your, there's your hook echo, little appendage down here, inflow notch, starting to get become more well organized. Severe thunderstorm warning just got extended. So we will see if that becomes a tornado producer at all um, within the next hour or so it may become even sooner but who knows at this point we'll see here if uh 
Yeah, and this storm, this is really the only storm that's looked good like this all day. Everything else has been very brief, very, um, not very, in terms of longevity, not really that good. So again, currently watching uh, this severe thunderstorm, uh, supercell thunderstorm, uh, just to the uh, just to the east of Sherbrooke, uh, Quebec, and again, still showing rotation along these uh, two area two areas, and it looks like the southern cell, as I said earlier, um, does become mostly the dominant one, and in fact, we are really seeing that. Notice how the uh, precip core up here is getting a lot bigger and kind of just bulging out um, out ahead of the uh, where the inflow notch would be on this southern or on this northern target or the northern storm rather so and again you still have that appendage down south so everything's just mostly gonna be focused down here to the south so towards Sawyerville uh, New Mexico uh, Hampton and all of these and this is gonna be tracking east northeast this could deviate a little bit directly east, depending on what happens. Um, but, again, we're going to be watching this very, very closely. As this seems to have the best tornado threat of all storms today. Again, we can go up in the atmosphere. can still see that upper level circulation. Sent me th something on Snapchat? Okay, let me check this out. That's that's very important, JJ. <laughs> very important. <laughs> Eventually, in the future, when uh, I get this channel monetized, we're going to have member subscriptions. We're going to have uh, so you guys can have access to cool badges and all that stuff. Instead of doing Patreon, uh, currently that's what I'm doing. Uh, it's going to be memberships on YouTube, and they're going to be a lot cheaper as well. So uh, hopefully, uh, when the time comes when I get monetized. Um, we are going to be doing memberships as well for the channel. So, and very another another thing to notice, I said with I said with uh, supercells, uh, with supercell intensity, um, notice lightning is starting to increase since that cell merger, especially near that updraft base too. Again, ZDR, let's see how ZDR is. ZDR is still present on this updraft base. It's not really. Still sustaining itself. Nothing really explosive, but still, still decent enough to where I could say it's probably it's still sustaining itself at that point. Again, severe thunderstorm warning. Severe thunderstorm warning with these supercells, uh, developing supercells down south and southern Maine. Doesn't look like rotation is that strong as strong as what it is up north. However, these supercells will continue to produce hail and damaging winds. Uh, Mount Vernon. Waterville, uh, Chesterville, Beans Corner, did not know that was a place, uh, Farmington Falls, uh, make sure to go ahead and uh, get inside. Make sure to also uh, get uh, anything that's loosely, uh, that's like anything loose out in the front yard, like toys or anything like that. Um, make sure to, uh, make sure to take care of that. Wow, very strong supercell. Wasn't even paying attention to this. Supercell, let's go to we'll go to the double box. Right here. Supercell thunderstorm. Uh just northeast of Greenville, Maine. Very, very, very strong mesocyclone. Uh just aloft. And this Mako tornado warned. This is probably as strong or even maybe stronger than this Cana than the Canadian supercell. There's your center of rotation right there. Very, very evident. And just for fun, we'll see if there's a correlation coefficient drop on this. And no, we do not see a CC drop. So no tornadoes on the ground as of yet. But however, uh, very, very strong rotation uh, being noted right here. So if you're on a path, uh, Millinocket, uh, just uh, west of I-95 near Midway, uh, Millinocket, uh, make sure to be weather aware. This supercell is uh, really rapidly strengthening and coming uh, to the east northeast. So, a couple supercells we have been watching now. 
Uh, strengthening Supercell. Yeah, that's a really nice mezzo, Ethan. Um, yeah, a couple strengthening Supercells now ongoing. And this just day is just getting started, so we'll see what happens. Another Supercell. And we're just seeing Supercells like crazy up here. Another Supercell just near Richmond. There's that area of circulation. Low kidney bean Supercell. Very weak rotation. Not as strong as the one to the east, but still, still there. Another mesocyclone just right here. There's your outbound. There's your winds going away from the radar. Greens inbound toward the radar. There's your center of circulation. Very, very, not as well defined, but still there. Still uh, noticeable. Still something to be very concerned about. New severe thunderstorm warning now getting issued with that far southern storm. Uh, so Mount Vernon, uh, Chesterville, and that area that I was talking about previously is now under a uh, severe thunderstorm warning. Golf ball sized hail, 60 mile an hour winds, and has now a considerable tag on it. So uh, golf ball sized hail now being uh, now being indicated on radar. Wow, look at this. Look how strong this hail core is. 70 dBZ hail core now in Maine. So you're getting pretty substantial uh, sized hail. We'll go to the the digital vertically integrated liquid and man look at this hail and you're getting almost maxed out colors uh, like in that uh, main uh precip core and again new update just came out reflectivity and wowza 70 dbz uh let's see how what's the strongest we can find here 74 dbz very very strong hail we're gonna get probably a lot of hail reports coming out of this so it's near livermore falls so mount vernon vienna fayette if you live near here, near uh, Old Highway 41, uh, live to the east, please make sure to seek shelter. Very, very sh big hail. Um, make sure to park your cars as well inside your garage or inside of a, uh, any space with a roof. Because you're probably going to get a cracked windshield and you're probably going to get uh, a few uh, dents in your car. Again, watching the supercell. Uh, very strong uh, mesocyclone on the supercell. Uh, just to the west of Millsocket, uh, Maine. Again, we also have to think. Of, we have to also talk about these super or these uh, severe thunderstorm warnings down to the south. And again, we're getting some more damage. Wind damage report just coming out of east side of uh, Harrisburg. Train spotter reporting uh, wind damage. Uh, see wind gusts up to 56 miles an hour. Uh, already with this so this thing's been producing wind damage uh for quite a while in harrisburg severe thunderstorm warning still ongoing uh still in effect uh just to the east of harrisburg and we'll go up and pull up uh radar here kind of in a radar hole but that's okay and velocity is not loading it's very odd so again severe thunderstorm warning is still in effect uh, New Hanover, Pottstown, uh, South Temple, Blandon, uh, Pennsylvania. 60 mile an hour winds and nickel sized hail. Again, we've had near 57, near really near 60 mile an hour winds being reported with these thunderstorms. So if you're southwest or yeah, southwest of Allentown or any of these uh, polygons, please make sure to uh, go inside. Make sure to uh, uh, take every uh, everything from outside if it's loosely... Uh, it's not uh, if it's loosely uh, on the ground and it's able to fly away. Make sure to bring it all indoors. And again, Maine's really getting hammered right now with these severe thunderstorms. Very big hail, up the golf ball size hail, just near right over Livermore Falls. Probably getting cored right now. And again, watching these supercellular thunderstorms with a better tornado threat uh, uh, in Canada here. And again, we do have a tornado watch out in effect for this area. Uh, until late tonight so it doesn't look as well as established as what it was earlier but again it is going under a cell merger so that typically does happen with these supercells but again center circulations right over here near new mexico uh probably has a really solid mesocyclone on it um as we speak but again nothing nothing that screams tornado to me at this time severe thunderstorm warnings clear down in virginia as well uh and again, look at this little linear segment starting to form right here in Virginia.
so, so this severe thunderstorm warning uh going on 60 mile an hour winds um again very very strong winds associated with this uh this linear complex down south severe thunderstorm warning still in effect in georgia Again, 60 mile an hour winds uh has been the has been the name of the game down here 60 mile an hour winds quarters uh, so again further down south especially uh when you get into new york southern new york state all the way down here is all mostly going to be um damaging winds and large hail we do have uh other than the, let's pull up the categorical outlook here again we do have a huge marginal risk uh you know not only we do have the slight risk we have the marginal risk all the way down into like near new orleans so very very large area of severe weather very marginal but again still there so we'll go back to the single frame radar it's less laggy and again if you're new to the channel my name is norman smith i'm a uh, storm chaser been storm chasing for the past two years uh, mostly chase tornadoes, but sometimes I, uh, if I can't go out chasing for whatever reason, I mostly stream uh, live severe weather coverage. So if you're new to the channel, I appreciate you uh, coming uh, on the channel and watching. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if your uh, if your passion for severe weather and tornadoes is is as great as mine. And uh, yeah, hopefully, I mean this year May has been fantastic. If you haven't seen any of the tornado videos uh, that I posted. Uh, about two weeks ago, week and a half ago. Make sure to go check them out. Had some of the best tornado intercepts I've had uh, of like so far in my career. So uh, it's it this it's been a blast this year so far. But regardless, still have to uh, regardless that aside, we still have to keep an eye out on this linear complex coming through. And again, special uh, marine uh, or uh, special marine. Uh, warning uh for the coast here near mexico beach all the way up to panama city and it looks like we'll have some uh gusty winds maybe not up to severe criteria but uh, potentially could gust as high as that we'll have to monitor that for any severe thunderstorm warnings let's check out our uh big hail producers up north and you can see this very classic supercell characteristic here's your there's your inflow notch and there's, there's your, well, there's your inflow notch. There's your hook echo. And again, not very strong on velocity, but it still is a supercell nonetheless. There's like no rotation at all on this thing, but still, regardless, um, still going to be a very large hail producer up to golf ball sized hail. So again, if you're down here in this area, as I mentioned earlier, please, if you're in the polygon, please make sure to, uh, get inside. Okay, so also monitoring these supercells up here up north, and it looks like they're kind of lining out. Notice how earlier we had more of a classic supercell shape, the greater inflow notch, and now it's just kind of lining out. <coughs> Excuse me. Phew. My throat is like really itchy. So, but we do still have supercells uh, down here near, uh, just to the east of, uh, southeast of, or just to the east of Montreal in this tornado watch. And again, a couple, couple, couple storms I'm still looking out for. Still monitoring this, seeing if it can still get its act together. And this little supercell down here near the Vermont, uh, Vermont Quebec border. Again, let's check a look at the supercell we were monitoring earlier. Go ahead and look at velocity. Still has a special weather statement on it, but still a very strong mesocyclone on it. Still present just to the east of Greenville, uh, Maine. Again, no tornado warnings for today, which is a very, very good sign. But again, this could all change as we have a tornado watch put up by the ECC or the ECC uh, in Quebec and also in uh, over here to the um, 
to the east in New Brunswick, just to the east in Maine, of Maine, I should say. Again, that is for the, and this watch over here is for the continuation of the storms coming through Quebec and Maine. So that is mostly for later tonight. That watch is. So again, here's a slight risk. Uh, here's the SPC slight risk extending all the way down into northern Virginia, Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, uh, west of New York City, Scranton, uh, Albany, Syracuse. You're all in the severe weather for today. Again, tornado threat. Let's go ahead and take a look at the tornado probabilities as well for today by the Storm Prediction Center. There's your 5% clear up into uh, Maine, which is really weird to say that. Typically, your fives are uh, not up here that far in the northeast, but they can happen. Um, there's your 5% and also 2% tornado risk extending all the way down to uh, central or east central uh, New York State. Also, sleeper target. Uh, down here in Florida, the Florida Panhandle from the current invest uh, or the surface flow that is coming on shore. But again, tornado threat is very minimal today, thank goodness, as uh, this is mostly a damaging wind, large hail type of event, mostly for the nor up north. So we're going to go back up here and monitor uh, this storm up here. And again, nothing is really catching my eye screaming tornado yet. But again, that could all change. We've been getting a lot of thunderstorm development as the day goes on. Again, there's our dangerous thunderstorms for today. Uh, or at least one of the major thunderstorms we've had all day. And uh, we'll go look at the, the digital vertically integrated liquid here again. And look at these hail cores. Very strong hail cores, getting maxed out collars on this uh, on this product. So very large hail being noted here. And we'll go ahead and uh, click on that severe thunderstorm warning. Golf balls, again, golf balls on 60 miles an hour. And again, we're going to get a lot more severe uh, weather reports as the day goes on. I'm surprised nothing's popped up yet. Typically right around this time, we have, a, we have a, usually a lot of hail. Excuse me, guys. My throat. I gotta take a break for a second. My throat has been killing me. I'm not used to these long live streams, guys. I'm mostly an editor. I usually post these YouTube videos, but now I like I like doing live streams. Now it's nice to interact with everyone in real time. Um, it's a lot more different, but I I, I like it so. Again, it's it's kind of hard, especially when nothing crazy's really crazy is going on. But if you're new to the channel, I kind of like to do stuff, especially if nothing a whole lot's going on. Um, if things are like calming down, or if nothing's really substantial, I will do something else, like uh, like do tier list. We did tier list earlier. Uh, it probably caused a lot of people to get upset. We did some fast food tier list, pop tier list, whole nine yards. Let's try to make the stream really enjoyable for you guys. So. Again, if you guys knew the channel, uh, make sure to leave like, subscribe to the channel. I, I, I go out and chase as much as I can. Uh, and I also go out and do live coverage as much as I can. Um, and I, and I, I just absolutely love giving you guys um, love giving you guys live uh, weather reports. And, I, and honestly, like, I know most people do U.S. coverage. But honestly, if you have Canadian radars, and if, you know, if you, especially if you've got radar scope, why not do it in Canada? Why not? I mean, you know, the, I'm also thinking about doing stuff in Germany too, especially since we now have German radars. So, you never, I mean, you never know what can happen at this point. So, I'm not only in the U.S., I'm also going to try to do uh, tornado coverage in uh, other countries as well that has radars on radar scope. So, a lot of severe thunderstorm warnings. Wow. Big complex of thunderstorms down here in southeastern Georgia. And severe it's not thunderstorm warnings for 60 mile hour winds quarters. Um, so again, any if you guys are in these severe thunderstorm warnings, make sure to take it seriously. Um, we've had a lot of uh, very intense damaging wind reports. Also, 
coming out of Pennsylvania. Around 60 mile an hour wind gusts reports also coming out. Severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, in effect, oh, that is not the severe thunderstorm warning. 60 mile an hour and quarters coming near Philadelphia. We should do that sports podcast. Absolutely, I'm I'm totally down doing that. I've I've always wanted to do that. I still think about it. I absolutely think that's a great idea. Do it on a separate channel. A absolutely. Again, so it looks like severe thunderstorm warning is now in effect for portions of Baltimore as well. And we'll go see what this is warned for. And then just 60 mile an hour wind gusts. Regardless, 60, 70, doesn't matter. Uh, make sure go ahead and uh, go inside. Make sure seek proper shelter. Uh, take everything uh, inside that's not loosely, uh, that is not securely fastened uh, down to something that won't like fly away. Um, because that can cause, like, especially your like garbage cans or trash cans. Make sure to put them in the garage, because that can eventually go down to your neighbor's uh, uh, neighbor's yard and just blow the trash everywhere, and then you got to pick it up. And I, I, that has happened before. I mean, that's absolutely just terrible. And it's just a pain in the rear end. It looks like the the bet the best the best in the uh, most significant severe weather is definitely up here though, in the northeast, which is really odd to say coming from. I mean, most, mostly it happens in the south, or mostly happens in out in the Midwest or the Plains. I say here, we could talk about it later, JJ. Right now, I'm just going to try to stream. We need, but I will talk to you about that podcast. I think that's a really good idea. Again, still pretty evident of a strong mesocyclone. Still with the supercell uh, just near uh, Mini Nocket. Uh, Maine as well so still has a special weather statement but could go severe thunderstorm warned as the as this thing chugs off to the east and again severe thunderstorm warning also down here uh, for portions of uh, Farmington Farmington Falls Chesterville very 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 large hail as we're getting up to like 70 dbz on radar so golf ball size hail being uh Golf ball size hail and 60 mile an hour winds is the primary threat with these storms as well. It looks like we have a couple more thunderstorms developing down here in New Hampshire. Nothing significant, but something to watch out for, definitely, for sure. And again, look at these supercells. These, these two supercells have been acting really weird. And it looks like this northern supercell is really starting to get that hook echo shape to it. You can really see it near Val Racing, uh, heading towards Marston. And that could prompt a tornado warning here m momentarily. And you can see that little tiny little shrimp supercell is what I call them. These little tiny shrimp supercells, they look like a little tiny shrimp. And there's your inflow notch going right, right over Val Racing. And there's your center rotation right here where that hook echo and that inflow notch meets. Typically, your tornado sets always right here on the northern side of the uh, northern side of the hook. And I will, I've thought about doing an in-depth video on uh, storm spotting and the guide to do it. Um, kind of like a little tiny, like a little tiny uh, video and a guide to, uh, you know, to just, especially to know like what I'm seeing and also what others are seeing. So, again, this could be a very, this is a very interesting sign. This could be a, uh, again, this supercell definitely has had my interest. So, nothing else has been really, nothing, again, nothing else really is going on other than the hail and this. So, this is, these two storms are the ones that have been the really uh, significant ones so far throughout today. Again, I'm just looking and looking for any storm reports as of right now. Nothing going on as we speak.
So we'll go ahead and take a look down in Florida. Oh, is that se severe thunderstorm warning for Boston, Massachusetts? That's really intriguing. And the Boston radar's down, so we got to use... Is that... That, 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 okay. Apparently that thing is severe thunderstorm warned. 60 mile hour winds and quarters. That's a really small storm. <laughs> that's a, it's really small. But severe thunderstorm warning for Boston, Massachusetts. 60 mile hour winds, quarter size hail. So, Needham, Dedham, Brookline, uh, anyone in the path of this, please, or in the polygon, please uh, seek shelter. Uh, get Make sure to get inside. So you do not want hail hitting you at all. I've had that happen multiple times, and it's absolutely not fun. Again, thunderstorms look like they're developing here. In Florida, just little thunderstorms developing. Again, this linear complex coming through. Linear complex coming through. Nothing, nothing that really screens the QLCS tornado. Uh, no area of really evident strong rotation, but again, uh, special weather statements are out for this for fit winds up to 50 to 55 mile an hour. So just right at, um, just below severe criteria. And Ethan just mentioned something. Yeah, that looked like a microburst on radar, but I just didn't, wasn't sure. So... So yeah, it definitely looks like this could be a microburst. And that could really generate some big problems if we get some microburst. New hail report coming out of Livermore Falls. Up to inch size hail. Two inches. So that's bigger than golf ball sized hail. Wow. Golf ball sized hail is up to an inch and a quarter. Now we're getting up to hail up to two inches in diameter. Hail up to golf ball size hail. So abs that warning text absolutely nailed it. So we have now gotten reports up to golf ball size hail and greater uh, down here in, in southern Maine. So if you're near Waterville, uh, Oakland, uh, make sure to go ahead and get inside. Make sure to park your cars in your garages. Um, we have had reports now up to golf ball sized hail and, and or greater up to two inches once you definitely get up there to golf ball size range you're definitely generating big problems generating big 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 problems again supercell this really weird supercell going on looks like the southern one's starting to weaken as the northern one is strengthening again little tiny kidney bean shrimp supercell just near marston quebec there's your area rotation right there Again, this is going to be coming to the northeast. Very, very hard to discern rotation right here, but it is still visible. Very weak, but still very visible. And again, still have some minor rotation down here with this weakening supercell just to the south of uh, Hampton as well. So severe thunderstorm warning still is in effect for that, as well as a tornado watch uh, is still in effect as well throughout the evening. So we're going to be live. Uh, as long as the severe weather threat is still continuing on. So we'll go ahead and, uh, yeah, this, now finally this uh, thunderstorm is now severe thunderstorm warned that we've been also monitoring their uh, mill socket. And we'll go ahead and take a look at velocity here. Rotation's still there. It's been kind of weakening and kind of been uh, fading in and out recently, but still very, very present. Uh, through throughout uh, throughout its life cycle so again something to monitor something to watch um, again very strong hail coming out of that southern that southern storm and we'll, we'll go and take a look at uh, let's go and take a look at meso analysis because we have not uh, seen that for a while see you, Ethan thank you for tuning in brother appreciate it so we'll go ahead and take a look at mesoanalysis real quick. So again, mesoanalysis shows a live look at the current environment. And again, I do not like using supercell composite, but it, it is a good general, it just shows a good general overall environment for supercells. And again, these storms are 
already in a good environment highlighted by this by the supercell composite uh bulk shear very good bulk shear is going to sustain your thunderstorms uh srh storm relative felicity getting into a better sheared environment to the east closer to the shore closer to the east coast of the atlantic um you're getting a lot better shear but however your your uh instability gets a lot weaker too so there's your 500 mixed layer cape line runs all the way down here so to so far once it gets so far east it's probably going to weaken um as it gets further east so you're probably going storms today are probably going to have to be right along that sweet spot uh in between just enough thermodynamics and just enough shear in order to pump out a tornado norman look at the newest nam run what's going on with the new nam run so we will I will currently look at the the 18Z NAM run. Okay. So apparently, I, I usually don't do this, but apparently the new 18Z NAM nest run for Wednesday. And we did talk about Wednesday earlier today, guys, um, about a potential severe weather setup in the mid-Ohio Valley that could happen. So we'll be, I'm going to look on uh, COD here real quick. Take a look at this. COD is the uh, forecast page that uh, I use and a lot of other meteorologists use. And again, severe... Th yeah, Indiana. Wow, that looks really good. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the 18Z NAM. So this is mixed layer cape. Actually, let me go ahead and zoom in. It's a little bit. There we go. That's a little bit better. Sweet. Okay. So this is the mixed layer cape. This is the pretty much the instability in the atmosphere. And look at the instability just surging north. By 21Z, getting around 3,000 mixed layer cape in southern Indiana. And we're going to take a look at dew points. This is really we're really going to map out map out on how everything looks. Dew points getting into the 70s. Very big uptrend compared to what the 12Z NAM had for, for earlier. Actually, what's funny enough is you get actually a moisture drop out right here because that's actually a simulated uh, storm that the NAM has. Interesting enough. We'll take a look at a sounding here real quick. And that is very contaminated. Let's not pull that. Let me, uh, let me go out ahead a little bit of this. So again, we currently are ongoing uh, severe weather coverage for uh, for today, but uh, also looking at potential upcoming setups as well. So this is our currently a forecast. Uh, currently a forecast sounding. All right, sounds good, JJ. Take care, man. Thank you for joining in. Uh, currently, this is a uh, what the NAM model has very very good zero to zero to three kilometer uh hodograph right there highlighted by the pink and the red on the hodograph but up aloft it just jumbles everywhere and that's that's a really big problem considering that you know it looks like more than likely your storm's going to be high precip you're not going to have enough venting for your thunderstorms um but also your precipital water is at 1.4 which is kind of low um mid rh is at 55 so so your mid relative humidity is pretty high and like higher up in the atmosphere so um you very well could this the name's kind of signaling we could have a very high precip storm mode for wednesday but you can map out your cold front here there's your cold front way back here surface low off back to uh back to the west there's your warm front right here through central indiana and by 21z and it just surges north as the night goes on it just surges off to the east but definitely looks like this could be a tornado setup. Don't know if it's going to be very visible, but however, there is a tornado threat with this. As we see, very good 0-3 to three kilometer cape, 239. Very, very, very big time uh, low level instability. P watts, 1.8. Very, very high precipitable water values. Um, again, very good 0-3 to three kilometer hodograph. Very good turning with height. That's what tornadoes love. However, again... Once you get up to the upper levels, this green line you see, the yellow, the cyan line, that's your upper level. Uh, that's your upper level winds aloft. So once, if you don't have, 
good sh- like say for example if like your uh, upper level winds kind of just like go back in on itself like that it typically means you don't have really good venting or it just does not vent properly so very interesting very very interesting we could take a look at the upper level support very stout low level jet uh coming through 60 knots very 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 good so i don't want to spend too much time on this we have to get back to severe weather coverage um as well so so let's go ahead and uh go back to the let's go back again we have a lot of severe thunderstorms popping off here in maine but further down to the south we're seeing a lot more uh storms as well severe thunderstorm warning and severe thunderstorm warning for also near baltimore but also now severe thunderstorm warning for washington dc uh, this severe thunderstorm is, an, is going to expire. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look here. Severe thunderstorm warning is going to expire at 6 p.m. Uh, 60 mile hour wind gusts, quarter sized hail. Thankfully, there's no tornado possible with this. But if you're definitely near Washington, D.C., if you're out looking at the monuments, they're really awesome, uh, like Lincoln Memorial, uh, make sure to go inside and uh, seek shelter. Uh, very, very concerning. Um, as well, anytime you get a severe thunderstorm, it can be very concerning. Um, yeah, severe thunderstorm warning in effect. So make sure to go ahead, and just go in, go inside. Make sure to uh, make sure to securely fasten anything that's outdoors. Bring them inside so they uh, so they're not subject to flying debris. Um, again, severe thunderstorm warning is in effect down here in Washington D.C., but also. Severe thunderstorm warning down to the south of Baltimore near I-95. So just to the west of I-95, severe thunderstorm warning expires. Next 14 minutes with uh, 60 mile an hour wind gusts being the main threat. So again, no tornado threat, but 60 mile an hour wind gusts for the D.C. Uh, area and for the uh, Baltimore area. Again, no rotation with these. Uh, no, it, yeah, no, no tornado threat with these at all. So... If you're worried about tornadoes, you guys are all in the clear. Just expect dam- uh, possible damaging winds and large or small hail. Again, up north, we do have the uh, bigger threat going on. Um, again, watching this really awkwardly behaving supercell, I should say. Uh, and again, we still have rotation. As we can see. Here's, here's your gray colors, what's supposed to be green, going toward the radar. These brighter reds, almost pink, uh, going away from the radar. There's your area of rotation, which is just south of Audit, going now crossing into Maine, actually. So, severe thunderstorm warning is still in effect for that. Severe thunderstorm warning is still also in effect for this supercell. Um, just to the... Uh, this is one we've been watching for a little while now. The severe thunderstorm warning just now, just to the west of Medway. Um, so, again, if you're just to the west of Medway, if you're on I-95, uh, if you're planning to go towards Medway, I should say, make sure to stay weather aware. Supercell thunderstorm uh, with likely 60 mile hour winds, yep, and quarter sized hail. Um, again, main tornado threat really just looks to be back off towards Ontario as of right now. But again, everything is subject to change. Severe thunderstorm warnings now in effect for the Lynchburg, Virginia areas. Again, you see this really big linear segment that we all associate with damaging winds. Again, damaging winds is going to be a really big threat today, guys. It's 60 mile an hour winds, quarter sized hail. So again, we've had we have a severe thunderstorm watch and tornado watch. Tornado watch most is just for uh, eastern Quebec and also um, also a tornado watch also for uh, New Brunswick. Again, nothing's here yet, but that is going to be for later tonight. As these storms push through Maine and push out of Quebec, they're going to go towards New Brunswick, and that is for the tornado watch here later. Again, this is what we are watching for later, uh, or this is what we're watching for later today, as these storms could become more dominant and more, 
uh, surface based as they well they, they maybe already are surface based. I'm sorry, uh, they they may may become more dominant and pose a greater tornado threat. So we will see what happens with that. Um, no, doesn't look like any storms really going to tornado anytime soon. We thought this supercell down here was going to, but um, or had the best chance to, but it really just kind of lined out and just did not really do anything. But regardless, no tornadoes or not, we've been really busy here uh, looking and uh, just seeing how these uh, storms play out. And again, severe thunderstorm warning. Now, the severe thunderstorm warning is producing golf ball size hail now approaching uh, Fairfield along I-95, Waterville, Vassal, Vassal Borough, Pitts, uh, just to the south of Pittsfield, uh, Maine. So again, looks like the hail core has kind of died down a little bit. Go to the, the vertically integrated liquid. It wasn't as strong as what we've seen earlier. Here's what it was earlier today. And you can see when that when the golf ball size hail was being reported, we had almost maxed out contours. Excuse me. But now as we get, you know, as we get closer to the current time, it looks like it's very, it looks like it's weakening. Still probably some hail associated with this. Probably not as strong as what it was, but still, regardless, Waterville, uh, Fairfield, Benton, uh, please make sure to go ahead and uh, seek proper precautions. And severe thunderstorm warning also for Boston, Massachusetts, out of all places. Did not see this coming, not gonna lie. Looks like this little storm, uh, cannot see it on the main radar as the main radar is kind of down right now, but uh. Storm looks to be uh, going towards Boston, Massachusetts. So severe thunderstorm warning is going to continue until 6 o'clock p.m. Or, ugh, I can't speak. 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Again, these storm motions are absolutely moving very, very slowly. And we also have to look out for the storm near Philadelphia. We're approaching the Philadelphia Metro. As again, you see this big linear complex now starting to really take shape here. Uh, so, severe thunderstorm warnings now entering the west side of Philadelphia Metro. 60 mile an hour winds and uh, 60 mile an hour winds and uh, quarter sized hail and nickel sized hail as well. So, that's something we're going to. Uh, be watching. We're also still seeing these storms down here, down to the south, mostly damaging winds and small hail being the primary threat down here. It looks like this is just con trying to congeal in just a one big line. Earlier today, we just had this like smaller complex up north, but now everything's starting to line out. So we could have a very, very large damaging wind threat um, once you get towards Philadelphia. Uh, and into uh, Delaware and those regions down there as well. So again, nothing really, uh, nothing really going on in terms of tornadoes. Again, but still something to watch. However, so I got to. Uh, I'm gonna take a quick uh, break here for a second, quick bathroom break, and we're gonna be back on stream. So. Uh, we will be right back here momentarily. So we will, I will be right back here in a second.
All right, I am back, guys. So, uh, again, continuing live severe weather coverage. Uh, clear in the, from the northeast, clear down into uh, the Florida Panhandle. And it looks like we have some uh, some thunderstorm wind, wind gusts. Looks like we have 39 mile an hour measured winds with this uh, linear dying linear complex coming through. We have 39 miles per hour measured on the mesonet. And it looks like we have a couple potentially developing supercells out here. Very weak rotation, but still getting that little shape, that suspicious shape to them. Especially up here. Again, no rotation with these as of right now, but still gaining supercellular. Again, no tornado threat should come out of this. Um, but however, damaging winds is still going to be the primary goal, or the primary threat, I should say. My choice of my my I just once you like stream for a while you just lose words. You just can't like you just I mean you just lose your train of thought. Like you think about something like you think about what you're gonna say, then you just completely lose it or you just say something else. And it's just so aggravating sometimes. But that's just what it is. You gotta deal with it. And it looks like we may have another potential severe thunderstorm developing. Uh, just to the north of Newport, Maine. Getting a really strong hail core there. We'll get the vertically integrated liquid. It looks like we're getting some very strong colors over Harmony. So, could get some very strong hail just uh, in a few moments. And this could definitely go severe thunderstorm warrant here momentarily. Uh, Hudson, uh, Levant, Dexter, Garland, Ripley, Maine. Uh, make sure to stay weather aware uh, for, the next, uh, for the next hour or so as the storm approaches you. No severe thunderstorm warning yet, but this could definitely be severe warned here momentarily. You get big linear complexes down to the south. Uh, severe thunderstorm watch is in place for tonight. Again, very, very strong linear complex to the north. Severe thunderstorm warnings uh, along this looks like trying to convect into a big linear uh, line as it is L big line of uh, showers thunderstorms sub severe and severe storms clear from virginia all the way down to north carolina uh, along i-40 so very you know you don't have to have tornadoes to have an active severe weather day we are having a very very active severe weather day nonetheless supercell thunderstorm may be trying to develop here a little little tiny supercell near Compton again. Uh, velocity shows rotation. Do have rotation. Here's your outbound winds uh, going away from the radar. Noted by the the red out uh, the red uh, outbounds. Green inbounds going toward the radar, and that creates that counterclockwise circulation. Uh, and it's going to be heading just off to the east, just to the south of Compton. So that is going to be another supercell we are going to have to watch. Uh, later for later uh, down the road and we're going to be keeping a very very close eye on that again severe thunderstorm watches extend all the way uh, from Maine and uh, New Brunswick all the way down to northern Virginia So, again, I'll stop the stream once these severe warnings die down. Once everything starts to really die down, that's when I'll stop streaming. We've been streaming now for almost five hours. Um, and, again, we're gonna be giving, we're, I'm going to be giving you live severe weather coverage uh, until it's over. So, again, if you guys are new, again, originally I am a storm chaser. You've probably seen some of my videos and uh, recommended and just be there like, why is he live streaming? So, again, I can't really chase everything. Um but however, I try to chase most things. Um, most things being tornadoes is my uh, cup of tea. But either way, um, if I'm not chasing, I'm out I'm live streaming here at the studio. So if you guys are new to the channel, welcome. I appreciate you guys joining in on the stream. And if you guys are new, make sure to uh, leave a like if you guys enjoyed. If you guys really enjoyed, uh, subscribe to the channel. We've been uh, I've been trying to pump out as much weather-related content for you guys as much as possible. 
But again, severe thunderstorm warnings are already going on like crazy in Maine and uh, also Quebec. And we'll take a look at velocity. Very, very weak. Uh, but still, nonetheless, a supercell is still producing. Uh, still producing damaging winds and quarter-sized hail. So Medway, um, East, Mil uh, East Mill Nocket along I-95. Please be weather aware for that as well. Let's go check on our storm down to the south. Very, very... Uh, very, it's still a very uh, strong thunderstorm here near over Waterville. We'll take a look at the uh, vertically integrated liquid. And again, still can see that still strong, strong hail core here. So Waterville, Waterville Maine's probably getting some hail. Probably not as strong as what we've seen earlier with associated with the storm. But still strong enough. And back off to the west. Looks like we have a uh, another storm starting to fire near Canton. And it's just going to be training here over the same areas and we could have a localized flash flooding problem as well depending on how much rain this puts out so not only are we dealing with severe weather for this setup we're also dealing with flash flooding that could be a big problem as well in this area again this is the main super this is the main storm it's really catching my eye down here and uh down here in Quebec and their radars are absolutely really slow but that's okay but I mean this storm is I mean nothing's been really tornadic a whole lot we've had one tornado possible earlier in the stream way earlier in the stream and since then we've had really had no tour possibles a whole lot Let's go down south. Let's go down to. Let's go down here to Florida. We have this ongoing MCS. Just come on shore not that long ago. And looks like nothing really substantial with any QLCS risk, thank goodness. And just showers, the thunderstorms developing along in Florida. Nothing too substantial again. That's still worth uh, watching, especially in the Florida Panhandle regions. Again, severe thunderstorm warnings going on with this. Again, another linear complex here uh, just to the east of Macon, Georgia. Another little smaller Boeing segment uh, just to the east as well. And it looks like they just canceled the severe thunderstorm warnings as we were talking about it. But still, regardless, you can still get 40 to 50 mile an hour winds and small hails with these special weather statements. Um, and still keep an eye on those as well. We're going to take a look at some of the damaging damaging uh, wind reports coming out of uh, Frederick. No wind gust. Oh, we do have a wind gust up to 60 miles an hour. So that does meet severe criteria. So 60 mile an hour winds in Frederick um, being reported earlier with this linear big linear complex. So again, severe thunderstorm warning. Severe thunderstorm now going into Washington, D.C. So... If you are in downtown Washington, D.C. or near Bailey's Crossroads, Alexandria, make sure to go ahead and seek proper uh, shelter. A 60 mile an hour winds and uh, quarter size hail ha has been indicated on radar. And I'm sure we're going to get a lot of reports, especially since it's going towards the nation's capital. I'm sure we're going to get a lot of uh, weather reports here momentarily. So, again, we've had a lot of severe. Uh, weather reports and damage reports coming out. Especially near uh, Hershey, Pennsylvania and Harrisburg areas. And we can go ahead and look through some of these. As we have seen I think it was 60 fit, yeah, 56 miles an hour uh, and even higher as well. In some of these areas but again main tornado threat is going to be way further north if it does happen again environmental ingredients aren't there a whole lot but they're they're just enough to maybe squeeze out a tornado or two and again here's your supercell 
very, very broad circulation, but nothing very substantial. Uh, uh, earlier today was very, very substantial, but now the supercell looks to just be a hail damaging wind producing storm. So again, we're gonna keep we're gonna keep a close eye on how these storms are, and again, severe thunderstorms now approaching the Philadelphia metro area as well. For 60 mile an hour and quarters. You can also look on the terminal radar. Again, nothing really catching my eye for a QLCS tornado or anything of that sort. So, tornado threat is very, very, very minimal. So, again, we're just going to be watching these live. Uh, supercell thunderstorms to the north and also these linear complexes down to the south later for uh, potential tornado development especially up north but continuing uh, severe weather and damaging winds and uh, small hail large hail um, as well and again we do have this secondary line that is starting to form behind it. And that is along the cold front. Um, again, these are out in the open warm sector. Oh, these are out in the open warm sector. This right here is right along that cold front. And again, that cold front's extending all the way uh, down to the south. And you can just pretty much see the cold front going all the way north. But yeah, it looks like it could be a sub severe line pushing uh, get a second round up into uh, Washington, D.C. again, if that still holds. Severe thunderstorm warning just south of Charlottesville, Virginia. Uh, 60 mile an hour winds and quarter size hail being the main threats. If I had a dollar for my times, I've said 60 mile an hour winds and quarters. I'd be rich at this point. Severe thunderstorm warning, new severe thunderstorm warning just south of Albany. Looks like this supercell. Looks like a supercell thunderstorm. Uh, 60 mile an hour winds and quarter sized hail. Look at velocity, no rotation, so no gate to gate rotation, nothing really that strong, but still a supercell that can produce uh, and probably is producing a damaging winds and hail. Again, we're also still monitoring the supercell down in uh, the very southern edges of Quebec along the uh, New Hampshire and Maine border. You can see the supercell. We'll go ahead and pull up to the uh, to, to the double to the uh, to the double boxes here, and you can see this little tiny shrimp supercell is what we call them. Uh, still ch still chugging along. You can see that center of rotation. We'll go back to the center box or just this one box. See that center of rotation. Very very broad rotation, but still very, but mostly a strong rotation up here to the north. Um, so we're just, again, we're going to be monitoring this, making sure that none of this goes super cellular or produces a tornado at any time. Severe thunderstorm, new severe thunderstorm warning, should say. Now for uh, portions of I-95, again, Medway is what we talked about, uh, south of Millinocket and uh, along I-95. So now if you're along I-95, please make sure to uh, make sure to drive safe, pull off on the road if you have to. Once this comes towards you or on the interstate, um, again, damaging winds, large hail is the main threat as of right now. No tornado warnings, no tornado watches in the U.S. The only tornado watches we do have currently is the ones in Canada, New Brunswick, and uh, Quebec. That doesn't mean that tornado watch tornadoes can't happen in Maine. That just means uh, the ECC or basically the storm prediction, the SPC version of Canada. Thought it was necessary to put out a tornado watch. Again, you can really see this linear complex with more of an isolated storm mode down to the south. So again, that's going to be very interesting to watch. See how these isolated storms evolve over time. And we still do have this supercell. 
that we're going to keep on watching, keep on monitoring. And we just have a line of supercells along, uh, not supercells, a long, of, long line of uh, severe uh, thunderstorms along 95. And it looks like we may have another supercell just near uh, Cambridge. Uh, Cambridge, Maine looks like we may have a, a developing supercell here. Again, this is scanning really high up. But you can do see uh, this area of rotation right here. Um, again, green. These green and white colors going toward the radar. And these reddish pinks going away from the radar at your outbound winds. Green inbound. And, of course, right here is the area of your circulation. Again, we can kind of, we kind of can see that on radar there. There's that little, there's this very long stringed out supercell. But look at that little, look at that little appendage, a very little tiny appendage coming down. There's your inflow notch right there. And then, of course, your center of rotation is going to be setting right in there where I previously circled. So again, severe, a lot of severe thunderstorm warnings. New severe thunderstorm warning uh, for portions of Monroe, Frankfurt, 60 mile winds, a quarter size hail. So this thing has really come down on uh, the hail size, thankfully. Previously, we had golf ball size hail. Uh, thunderstorm wind damage now being reported in Livermore Falls. Again, uh, let's go ahead and look at this hail. An inch and three quarters, so golf ball size hail. And we had a train spotter report, two inch hail earlier today with that same storm. So. Big hail is a big, big, big problem today, and damaging winds is also the big, big, big problem. Again, now this whole line, wow, now that whole line of severe thunderstorm warned, clear from Philadelphia all the way down to Washington, D.C. So very, very uh, big-time linear segment coming through, 60-mile-hour wind gusts being the main threats. 60-mile-hour uh, winds, nickel-sized hail being the main threats again. So, we are currently watching a really active severe weather day. Maybe not for tornadoes, obviously, but for severe weather in general, which is still very important, needless to say. Again, we are still seeing an area rotation down here to the south with the supercell we're watching in Quebec. Again, right along that little appendage that we talk about all the time with these supercells. Yes, rotations right there, always on the appendage of that supercell. No tornado warning with this. Uh, no, no tornado warnings anywhere. So that is a very, very good sign. Now we just realized, realized we have now hit the five-hour mark on this live stream. I think it is the longest live stream I have done this entire day so far so that is very 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 good so obviously we're going to continue it for later on um, as long as severe weather is still alive for the most part we'll continue it on so i won't take another break i'm sorry i do have to use uh i've taken our bathroom break i being new to doing these live streams is very very uh there's a lot of challenges to it um, I used to do a lot, a lot, um, but I don't do it. All. I didn't before this. I didn't do it a whole lot. So, um, again, I will be right back. Again, live severe weather coverage uh, is going to continue, and potentially we could have, um, we could potentially have an increasing tornado threat later today, uh, later on this afternoon as that low level jet kicks in. So, but we will see. Time will only tell. Um, I'll be back in a few minutes, and uh, again, live coverage begins here shortly.
All right, we are back. All right, so we do have a uh, severe thunderstorm warning now in effect. We have to get to, uh, very importantly, uh, just near uh, Dothan, Alabama. And just coming into Huntsville. Severe thunderstorm warning now in effect. Uh, 60, mile, 60 mile an hour winds, quarter size hail, and tornado possible. Uh, buddy of mine, I, I, I'm not sure if I can share it in the group or on the thing uh, or on the stream, but uh, there was a rotating wall cloud here earlier. Uh, you can even see it on uh, for past couple scans. Very, very strong circulation uh, right here. I just don't know if there was a correlation coefficient CC drop. And it doesn't look like there was, but a uh, tornado possible now just near Huntsville, Alabama. So we're going to have to really monitor the storm tune again. This is not even in a 2% and we're getting tornado possible. There's our 2% way down there in Florida. So again, here's our other tornado uh there's our other best tornado probs of the day so far as well. So back up north, uh, as we continue to watch the storms down to the uh, south for any tornado warnings, um, supercell thunderstorms still just near Quebec. Uh, we're going to be watching near St. Malo. Uh, again, rotation still there, but, it, man, it's really starting to look weak. Uh, severe thunderstorm warnings popping off everywhere on the I-95 corridor. Uh, super cell thunderstorm still going on uh, near Medway now crossing I-95 and again no rotation with these maybe actually there's some broad rotation now but it's very very weak and broad just to the west of I-95 just to the south of Medway now but that is still something to watch out for needless to say and again severe thunderstorm warning now for Garland uh, Maine uh, probably is likely going to get uh, pushed uh, east into Howland and Greenbush. We'll see what happens. Severe thunderstorm warning still continuing to go on is what we talked about. Um, again, quarter-sized hail is still the threat with that. And again, let's go back down to the Mid-Atlantic and into uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, severe thunderstorm warning is still going on for Washington, D.C. Probably getting some small hail down there southwest of the of Washington, D.C., but regardless, still getting a very heavy damaging wind threat through Baltimore. Uh, clear up into uh, almost Philadelphia now. No tornado possible with these. Um, still a very, very concerning damaging wind threat with 60 mile an hour winds possible. Again, no, no, no reports just yet. There's some hail reports coming out of near Lynchburg, Virginia with that severe thunderstorm. Let's go back to this one. This one is still, we're still monitoring. This is tornado possible. So it is definitely possible this could produce a tornado if it strengthens up again. Uh, but it looks like it's it's still at a weakening phase. Still not really that strong. Um, but again, still, it's still a uh, tornado possible. So we, we have to keep an eye on that as well. Severe thunderstorm warning ahead of this complex just to the east of Macon. Uh, the severe, th severe thunderstorm warning will expire at 6.15. Uh, 60 mile an hour winds and quarter sized hail. Uh, severe thunderstorm warning now to the north of Savannah, Georgia. Uh, just along. Uh, what roadway is this? Just along uh, Highway 21. So very, very, uh, again, very, another very strong uh, thunderstorm here. 60 mile an hour winds and pennies. Again, this line will continue to push off to the east as the night progresses. And again, look at this big linear complex. Very, very large, wide linear complex. Could have some water spouts offshore down here near Port St. Joe, but nothing uh, is certain yet. 43 mile an hour winds measured near Panama City. 41 mile an hour, mile an hour winds wet, uh, measured as well. So something to keep an eye on as well. And again, we'll, we'll go back up to the northeast on this severe weather setup up here. And again, I am... Let me let me see here real quick. I'm going to try to ask if I can share some of these live pictures with you guys. Let's 
Let's see if we can get live photos for you guys. And absolutely we can. All right. So this is currently a live photo of the supercell now down in Alabama. Very, very ominous of the tail cloud. Um, I had to open it, uh, open it from the uh, link from Discord. But very, very ominous tail cloud with this supercell. So it is supercellular. Uh, we still have rotation with it, and that is a live picture as we speak. Inflow tail, we can definitely tell that this supercell is inflow dominant. So it is not over by any means. And of course, it is heading in a bad area. At a, it's heading into a really, really bad area. Um, definitely do not want a tour possible thunderstorm. Um, you know, right when, uh, right when it's heading into a populated area. Another image just came in as we just as we speak. There's another photo of this live supercell going on just near, uh, just near Huntsville, just right over Decatur, Alabama, and you could really see that uh, RFD cut right there on the left side. That clean or that clean or the uh, looks like uh, that clean air, but it's actually rain wrapping around that circulation. You can see that tail cloud, that uh, other feature, and that little lowering. So looks like a wall cloud is now starting to redevelop with a storm just near Decatur. And this is going to be the main one we're going to be watching here for the next couple hours or for the next hour or so. Maybe even a little bit shorter than that. Depends on how it goes. But very, very strong storm right now. Uh, and again, here is another photo he just posted not that long ago. Very, very beautiful supercell. High precipitation a little bit, but it looks like a new base is still starting to form. Uh, it looks like it's to this right, which is very interesting because it looks like uh, the base is on the northern side, which it does make sense if it's that way, looking out on radar. But needless to say, this is going to be the storm they're going to be watching um, for the, for a little while now. We've, we do have photos. We do have pictures of a live uh, rotating wall cloud. Um Thanks to uh, Storm Chaser Brian Wilson. Uh, not Actually, I'm not sure if it's a uh, he's a Storm Chaser. But he is a weather enthusiast in a group chat I'm in. So thank you for the pictures, Brian. So, again, this supercell uh, still ongoing. Severe thunderstorm warning now in effect. There's that area of rotation. Not as strong as what it was. But, again, we still have a wall cloud. Still have a, a reported... Uh, uh, we still have a reportable wall cloud and everything. It's still on the ground, uh, or at least not it's still on the ground. It's still there. So, again, this is going to be making its way across Interstate uh, 565 towards Huntsville. Again, tornado possible with this storm. Um, again, this again, this is what we say, people. Uh, you don't have to have a 2% tornado risk to get a potential tornadic storm. There's your 2% down here. And then, you know, that the closest one's clear down to southern Florida. While your other tornado threat is clear up in the northeast. So, again, that's why these low-end setups can still be very dangerous. Um, so, again, we're going to be, wa be watching the storm very, very closely. As this could very well produce a brief tornado. So we're going to have to keep a very close eye on it as uh, as it's progressing off to the east towards Huntsville. But either way, we're going to look at these severe thunderstorm warnings up north. New severe thunderstorm warning uh, now just to the north of the Philadelphia metro area. As we do have a uh, as we do have 60 mile an hour winds and penny sized hail. And it looks like we have a couple other thunderstorms developing behind it. Not sure if it's going to get severe, uh, but still regardless could still produce heavy rain and lightning. Again, this entire line's worn for 60 miles an hour. So, if you're on that Maryland Peninsula next to the Delaware uh, border, make sure to uh, make sure to go ahead and get ready. Severe thunderstorm warning probably is gonna get reissued again. Um, out ahead of that, again thunderstorm. So have a lot of thunderstorm wind damage reports coming out of uh, coming out of the area as well. Again, severe thunderstorm warning. Looks like they're going to let that continue to expire. But thunderstorms now pushing to the uh, 
you know, the Massachusetts, uh, Vermont border as well. And looks like the main storms right now are going to have to be these storms near Maryland, not Maryland, uh, Maine, and also down in Alabama. Again, Supercell Thunderstorm just now crossing I-95. Again, we do have a broad mesocyclone. Nothing really that strong, but however, this is still a, a broad mesocyclone that could um, drop a tornado uh, within uh, in a little while, depending on if it's in the right ingredient or as in it's in the right environment for the best ingredients i should say so going down south now let's talk about this huntsville storm the main one that we all just seen pictures of rotating wall cloud uh this will be coming towards huntsville this could be tornado warned if it starts to strengthen up again as a tornado possible tag is still actually they just removed it wow that's really shocking either way still have a rotating wall cloud still have a uh very prominent supercell. So again, we also still have this uh, this ongoing MCS down to the south. No severe thunderstorm warnings. We do have sub-severe wind gust reports up there uh, around 50 miles an hour. Also, there's some more thunderstorm wind damage reports down here uh, along I-16 as well, just near, just to the west of Pembroke. Severe thunderstorm warning now just to the south of Raleigh, North Carolina. Let's go take a look at that just near the radar site too. And this is a severe thunderstorm warning for Harris, uh near Clayton. Uh, Harris Crossroads, uh, for this severe thunderstorm warnings will expire at 6.30 p.m. Uh, 60 mile hour wind gust being the uh, main threat with that as well. Again, let's go back up north here. Monitoring these, uh, a couple of these storms. Some of them are super cellular. Um, no tornado threat at all just yet. Again, we are still monitoring a couple of these storms down here, though. It looks like we have a couple areas of rotation up here, especially with this little supercell. And you can see this little this little hook appendage coming down along with this inflow notch right here on this side of the storm. There is some rotation that we did see on radar right there. And we'll go ahead and pull it back up on velocity. And again, there it is. Green toy. Uh, so... Again, we are seeing a uh, an increase in thunderstorm activity, tornado activity. We're really not seeing it much of, um, which is a very good sign. But still, could happen, especially if the storm down here. Um, so again, we're really going to very really monitor this storm here. Again, broad circulation, not as tight, and not as strong as what it once was, but still there, just right over Decatur. So we are now waiting and seeing just what, uh, just waiting for the next scan like that. But also while we're waiting, we can go ahead and, uh, we will actually go ahead and look at the, uh, SPC forecast for the next couple of days. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, storm prediction center website here. Again, here's our current slight risk. Severe thunderstorm watches outlined in blue from all the way in Maine, clear down to Northern Virginia. But tomorrow, we do have a slight risk for portions of South Central Texas. Big giant 2% uh, covering San Antonio, Lubbock, Austin, Texas, Waco, Abilene. Damaging winds, large hail being the main threat as of right now, but still subject to change. Slight risk again for Central Texas, a little bit further to the east this time. And then we do have a 15% contour down here in Eastern Texas 
uh, Louisiana, of Western Mississippi. And again, we could still potentially also see a severe weather threat up in Indiana, Ohio as well um, with how the current short, shorter range models are trending. So again, we are just waiting to see if the next lot or the next scans coming through. And it looks like I have a couple supercells now going through South Central Maine along near I-95. Again, nothing really notable here. And again, looks like the severe weather threat's not necessarily dying, but not as strong as what we anticipated either today. Which is still a good sign. Again, severe thunderstorm warning now to the south of Albany, New York, going into Massachusetts. Likely 60 mile an hour winds. Yep, 60 mile an hour winds, a quarter sized hail. Again, just current severe thunderstorm warnings already going on through the mid Atlantic region. So with 60 mile an hour wind gusts uh, being possible. New severe thunderstorm warning now. Uh, at head of this main, uh, head of this line here near Charlottesville. Uh, severe thunderstorm warning seen until 645 with 60 mile an hour winds. Yeah, we have a lot of severe warnings currently going on, but this one right here is, has my eye, or did have my eye. I don't know how, how it looks now, but had current wall cloud and tail cloud picture come through of uh, some locals through there. And it looks like the rotation's still there, but it's very, very broad. So it looks like the storm is starting to weaken a little bit. So regardless, damaging wind threat is still going on. Across the regions here looks like some uh, wind reports up in uh, thunderstorm wind damage in Boston downtown Boston Massachusetts again wind reports coming out of Albany New York again we're just mainly watching the stuff in Maine and also the, the severe thunderstorm in, in uh, Huntsville that prompted the tour possible tag. The storm just crossed I-95, so it looks like uh, wind south north of Chester, south of Reed, uh, south west of Bancroft. Uh, you are in the path of this severe thunderstorm warning. And it looks like center of rotations again is still weak, but you can still see it down here. Let me circle that a little bit better. Still down here a little bit. And see on the end of that end of the hook echo. So there's your yeah. So there's your supercell structure right there. Very classic supercell structure. But you see that little appendage coming down. But then that inflow notch starting to just go right in there, uh, where where your rotation is going to be. So again, something to watch out for. Um, and nothing really screams again. Nothing really screams uh, tornado threat just yet but again we still have a little ways to go possibly okay nothing really catching my eye on velocity with any of these storms so again severe thunderstorm warning still still in effect 60 mile an hour winds down here in the mid Atlantic region. Going into Delaware and going into the just going out of the DC area, but it looks like we may have, excuse me, we may have another uh, squall line that's starting to become sub severe in the region. Excuse me. So. You can see a slow pressure system off of the Atlantic is now starting to really push inland. 
Yeah, nothing really exciting going on with these thunderstorms, really, other than 60 miles an hour wind, 60 mile an hour wind reports. Again, severe thunderstorm watch is still in effect. Still going on. All the way from Maine, all the way down to Northern Virginia as well. Again, tomorrow we will be live tomorrow. So to stay up to date, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Um, hit the bell for notifications for when we go live tomorrow. And again, we do have a tornado threat tomorrow. Uh, could get in, it could get increased, but we'll go ahead and again go back and look at the uh, SPC website. Current two percent tornado probs um, being shown here for all of East Central Texas down to the Mexico border. So again, uh, tornado threat uh, for tomorrow is there. So again, we're going to be watching that as well. I mean, honestly, the first the two the first two streams for uh, for the first ever severe weather coverage on this channel has been very very interesting. We've had twenty dollar donation yesterday. We had a, uh, and we've been covering events in weird places like Maine and Canada. So this this has been very very weird, a very very interesting on how this has all started. So just watching these supercells just along I-95 is the main threats right now. Severe thunderstorm warning in effect for the storm down south uh, with quarter-sized hail being possible. With uh, quarter-sized hail being possible. Severe thunderstorm warning still in effect with that supercell as well. So we had originally a severe thunderstorm warning down here down to the south. Looks like that has it was allowed to expire. Again, a lot of... 60 mile an hour severe thunderstorm warnings on the uh, east coast here. But then severe thunderstorm warning down here, down to the south. Looks like it may be allowed to go expired now since we have a special weather statement uh, for that region as well. But we still have tornado watches. The uh, the storm prediction center version of the uh, storm prediction or the the storm prediction center version. Of Canada the ECC has issued tornado watches in Canada but the SPC decided just to go with a regular severe thunderstorm watch so doesn't mean we can't get any tornadoes here in the US today but um, it's still definitely possible but seems like the uh, the ECC gone up went a little bit bullish again no don't see really anything uh, that stands out me to scream tornado or anything so severe thunderstorm warning up here was allowed to expire as well very very interesting and severe thunderstorm warning up here is allowed to expire as well to the north and just to the near uh, just near uh, Birmingham we originally had this Storm having a uh, wall, rotating wall cloud, severe thunderstorm warned, and then now it just completely died off. So again, just watching. It's starting to become a slow day, but uh, that's still a good sign. Severe thunderstorm warning still in place uh, for a lot of these regions, especially just with 60 mile an hour winds. So... Supercell threat, supercell tornado threat, supercell damaging wind threats kind of becoming uh, decreased as the day goes on. We're starting to see a lot more just linear complexes uh, that are just going towards the Atlantic Ocean right now. Nothing too prominent, nothing too interesting. We've been streaming for the past five and a half hours. Um, so it's, we've been very, very uh, busy nonetheless. So again, we are just continuing to, I, I'm sorry if it acts like it's completely dead right now, but we are continuing to watch severe weather coverage 
may end the stream here soon we've been it's been slowing down a little bit nothing too crazy no big kale no big win just very uh i mean six man hours big win but nothing very significant it looks like uh had 59 mile an hour measured wind gusts in washington dc just like right at the severe threshold which is around 60 miles an hour But again, thank you guys so much for the uh, continued support on the stream and uh, watching the content. You guys are absolutely amazing. And you guys have been doing very... Uh, thank you guys just so much for the overwhelming support on the tornado videos and the chase videos recently and the live streams too. You guys have just been absolutely fantastic. And thank you guys um, so much for the... Uh, just the, It seems it's like, it's like an infinite amount of support. And it's just overwhelming, honestly. Um, you know, so thank you guys so much. And again, uh, this is not my channel. Um, this is our channel. Um, and I know I said I'm the one that sets up the stream and does it, but you guys are also one that kind of maintains it and watches and, you know, so without you guys, I wouldn't be here. So thank you guys so much, um, for the, just the overwhelming support recently and just the positive comments and the positive vibes in general. You guys have just been amazing. So we're going to continue here for a little while, maybe in the stream, if uh, things continue to die down a little bit. Um, severe thunderstorm warning still in place. I just don't want to sound like a, like I'm like a recorder or just like a, it just sounds like I'm just re repeating myself. Plus my third's really starting to hurt. I've been talking for like the past like almost six hours now, almost. <laughs> So, Severe Thunderstorm Watch is still in effect for the next two hours. Likely it's probably going to be let to expire here soon. And the setup was earlier in the day, though. So, again, really not much going on. Dying line coming out through the uh, Gulf Coast. And it looks like it's pretty much just a little damaging wind threat. Special weather statement all on that line for along the line for yeah, 50, 40 miles an hour. So I may just actually just go ahead and end the stream here. Um, nothing's really going on actually, other than uh, just 60 mile an hour winds. Um, plus we've been doing the stream for the past five and a half hours, almost six hours. So. Um, Thank you guys so much for the amazing stream. We're doing it tomorrow. So, again, thank you guys so much for watching. And, uh, again, subscribe to the channel if you're new. If you like uh, storm chasing, if you like tornado videos, if you like uh, severe weather coverage, make sure to subscribe with notifications on for my next stream and uh, for my upcoming content. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys.